What's going on, Rob? How are you, man? What's up, dude? What's up, dude? Oh, dude, man, we've been sorting, or trying to sort and failing to sort echoes out. How is yeah, everybody yeah. doing in the chat? Uh, we, look, ladies and gents, we're going to spend a couple of minutes trying to sort this echo because I know we had it last year and I think we got it on again. And <laughs> last time it was Uncle John and he's calling that fixed it for us. So bear with it. Bear with us, guys. Yeah, guys. Yeah, guys. In the chat. In the chat. We know we there's, know a, there's fucking a fucking echo. We actually, <laughs> we are, actually very aware, are very aware that there's a fucking echo. There's, echo. there's some weird, there's shit, some going weird shit going on. And it's, and you know, it's, you know, it's going to be what it is. It's going to be what it is. I'm just going to call Uncle John again. Yeah, Last call, time Uncle, he John, fixed call it. Uncle John. Fuck it, Uncle John. Uncle John. Where are you? If he fixes it, that'd be some wild shit. Some wild shit. Oh, we're going to have to make it a regular segment of the show if he fixes it. Yeah, yeah. Right, but he's got to cut Uncle his John head everyone. every time we call Just him. fixed it last time. Hey, hey, I'm not echoing anymore. You can hear me, Rob? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a light echo. Is the echo going yet? Uh, it's light. Like I'm almost in the guy's phone. Like I'm in your phone. <laughs> What's What time is it over there? What's up? Hey, Uncle What's John. Up, buddy? You fixed our echo last time. We're hoping you'll fix it again for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really want to talk to you. Dude, Rob. I, I have no idea everything. why Rob, Vigent, and I echo. But last time when we fixed we fixed it, it was because you had the call. So we're Look at this. Like to I'm, here to help. Help. I'm here to help. Remember when you used to do bench presses, Ryan? When I used to do bench presses? Uncle John yeah, can yeah, bench press more up than there. you, Rob. You just be careful. Well, look at me. I'm getting pecky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what, what's the what's the topic of the day here boys oh we haven't started yet we just kicked the topic off of the day is we, like, we, need to, we, we, we are live we've got 70 people live with this we're in the first couple of minutes but we just was like oh man this echo so we're gonna we're gonna we're getting straight into calling you because you fixed it last time but i don't know man last time it was when we hung up from you it was all good so we gotta roll the dice oh okay <laughs> nice nice <laughs> anyway well, happy to help any way i can legend you know, and, and, and what you know, i do i super appreciate the fact that you answered without any warning at all so thank you very much <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> well i hope it works i hope it works for you guys have a good one thanks man and thank uh, you buddy you know rob whenever you're ready to do that left-handed tack match you just let me know buddy i'm, I'm on it i've been conditioning my hand so it's going to be like leather beautiful beautiful i love it <laughs> All right, buddy. All right. Thank you. All right. See you, man. See you guys later. Bye. Hey, I think we're fixed. Are we oh, fixed? Kind of, kind of. Are we fixed? Guys, and in the comments, in the comments, it's not the fucking, it's not headphones. The fucking it's headphones. headphones. There's just a weird, just gremlin, a weird gremlin, gremlin in this system, system, we've, got system here. we've got here. We need. I, I, basically, I need to get someone who knows all the machinery that's sitting in front of me better than I do. Anyway, how is the Echo, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. We've got 83 people across all the different platforms. Whether you're watching on my YouTube, Rob's YouTube, or Facebook, welcome. It's better. Look at that. People are saying it's better. People are saying well, it's better. Talking, yet. talking yet. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's always on Rob. <laughs> okay. It's not better. Anyway, I don't know. Man. Let's fucking Let's go. Fucking Who, cares? Who cares? Let's go. Rob, what's been going on, man? What has been going on? Man, I'm feeling yeah, a little bit, bit, a little I'm bit, a little bit spicy, spicy today. today. I got a lot of shit going on. And I'm ready to and run ready some to hot topics. Some hot whatever topics, you want, whatever you want to me. throw at me, I got that. I got you ever that. wake up you with a hair across your ass? Across your ass? A hair across your ass? That's an expression. That's an expression. Like, like, like you're kind of having a bad day. You're having a little bit of a almost like almost like you're in a fight mood. Okay, I downloaded a clip just for for this segment, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a quick play of the clip. See if it works. Hopefully, it does, and then we'll get stuck into it. Here it goes. All right, Rob's got a bee in his bonnet. That's the theme of this one. Rob has a bee in his bonnet. Rob, what is, what is going on? Are people, are, people, are people telling you that Jerome Loud's going to take your hand or something? What's going on? Oh, oh, oh in arm wrestling, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's things that annoy, that annoy me. I'm just annoyed, I'm just annoyed, in, general annoyed in general today. today. You know, this you is know, part this about is being a middle-aged middle 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 man, man with a lot of fucking, lot baggage. Of fucking baggage. But but then when I get into the arm wrestling realm, yeah, I mean, people say Jerome is fine. I understand, I understand that there's, that there's geographic, geographic loyalty. loyalty. They have exposure, they have exposure to, him. to him, but but 
Let's say someone going to take my hand, take my hand, take my hand, like, what's the, the basis, what's the on, basis this? on this? Where are we basing, Where are we basing this? this? Like, that's just talking like, talking like, that's like you saying, like you saying, take, take my hand, Ryan. The fuck <laughs> you guys get you off. You guys get off. But there's, there's something actually in that. I mean, I mean, I, like, it's, when you look at this wrist throb next to that two liter Coke. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> what I noticed, what was, I noticed your wrist, was your wrist was the same size, the same size as your forearm. Yeah, well, that, that's 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 a kind of a goal of mine. I want. So to I, don't know that, I don't know if that means humongous wrist, humongous wrist or, or a small forearm. It's small forearm. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's weird. Wow. Well, well, like, look well, at that. Look, look at this. I, yeah, that's that just, does look. That's just gnarly, that, gnarly. That looks. I just kind of. I, uh, and I, was, I don't mean to be offensive. Right. Right. You gotta grab it. Grab it though. You gotta get. You gotta get a hold of it. It's like wrestling it's like a wrestling chimpanzee. chimpanzee. Look at it and you like, and you're like you think it's you like think a it's fucking, like, a, like how strong, like, how strong, strong can, it really, can it really be? And then it like and then members like, you, 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 you never wish you never fucked it. it. If you're lucky, if you're you get lucky, you're gonna end up on the Oprah show. On the Oprah show. Okay, hang on. I'm just reading people's comments, man. They've, they're hammering us on this audio. Hang on a second. Yeah, well, it's not it's not Rob, guys. It's not Rob. Everyone's it's not me, guys. I go on everyone's podcast through the same shit here. It's Ryan. Ryan. It's it's my Rode Podcaster Pro combined with my <laughs> AV streaming mixer AV VR one. If I gotta hear about one more set of fucking headphones, <laughs> check, oh, it, check it. It's for all you motherfuckers. Side, but... oh, shit, I don't Watch know this R two D two shit. This is when I get on and swear at little kids playing Fortnite. Okay, I'm gonna get desperate. I'm gonna just let's go. I'm, I'm, let's see if this fixes anything, guys. Hang on a second. Oh, like, does that change anything? Talk, Rob. Yo, yo. Is it better? Tell me it's no, better. No, 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 no. Better. no. Ryan, we're fucked. Ryan, we're fucked. Look, no, people are saying it's working now. Look, look at the comments. But I get uh, that might just be because I'm talking. And yeah, I'm when, like, I talk, when I talk, I hear two of me. Two of me. Oh, I actually I have actually time have to time rebuttal my own rebuttal statements. My own statements. <laughs> it's that bad. Ah. Oh. Hang on a second. Just when we were about to get spicy about your skinny oh, ass no, forearm. We're, we're ready, ready, ready to ramp up to. Yeah, to we were about up. to do it. Fix my I was audio about to mix, do it. yeah. I was about to get emotional. I've been emotional since about 5 o'clock this morning. I, don't know. I honestly don't know how to fix this. But the weird thing was, all right, guys in the chat, when we rang Uncle John last week, all of a sudden the echo just disappeared. I rang him on WhatsApp via my computer and it seemed to cancel this i don't hear any echo in my ears none none there's no sound going out if you stood in the room with me you would not hear rob unless you're wearing these what is the deal Turn. i'm using my phone hey it's gone am i mute i'm over here talking to myself I can't hear shit. It's gone now. Perfect. And look at you guys go. I always get part of shit shows. You know that? I've never had a smooth podcast. This is why I don't have a fucking podcast. Holy God. You know what? I probably could have made a lot of money as a fucking technical person if I got if I cared about this shit. I just want to talk shit. I just want to tell people about my gains. Thirty six point six kilos, fifty five kilos, sixty kilos. Right, I can't hear shit about what you're saying, homie. I see your lips moving. So I assume you're lying. You're probably talking about how beefcakey you are. You're probably saying that they, you look better naked and shit. And I don't know if I'm buying it. Can you hear me, motherfucker? Am I talking to myself? Oh, you can hear me, but I can't hear you. This is hilarious. You're like a fucking mime right now. Okay, charades. The monkey in the box. Yeah. Dude, you gotta go like this with the guy pulling the fake rope.
<laughs> hey guys, listen. Would you expect anything less than a fucking shit show? The only thing that would make it more excusable is if we had about fucking half a pint of vodka in us. Serious, man. Smash the like, please do. Don't you see we're trying over here, guys? Trying to do a fucking thing. Listen, you could get a smooth running show, but why is that even entertaining? Look at this shit. My fucking kid even bounced. Oh, now I'm on the left. <laughs> Bro, you're supposed to be my Artem, and you're not being a very good Artem. What the fuck, dude? Travis would have fired you. You better be glad I'm so understanding. Fucking tooting in Tokyo. Remember that movie? Tooting in Tokyo. It was like nerds or goonies or some shit. Golly. Yeah. This is ridiculous. All right. I'm going to take um, things you do alone in the shower for 100, Chuck. <laughs> what is uh... cleaning your middle finger? Testing, 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 testing. 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 All right, guys. I don't know if you can hear me, but while Ryan dicks around, I want to show you something. This is the coolest gripper in the world if you guys like grippers. Right? See this little fucker right here? This little Jap product? It adjusts. So look at I can make it wider. And the nice thing about it is, right, is it squeezes straight. It doesn't go like this. It squeezes like this, right? So look. Fuck, how do I do this? See, it goes straight. And then you can make it really wide. Hey, I hear you. You hear me, but real low, isn't it? You're real low. And I'm echoing. <laughs> Guy. This is a fucking Roman Greek tragedy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, just talk to your phone. Fire up through your phone. Because people want to hear what's going on with the world of arm wrestling. And I know what we're not going to talk about today, Ryan. What are we not talking about? Devin and... What? Oh, there you go. Now you know. Did you hear me? I can't do it. You got to leave that for Pradeep and Concrete Elbow. What would their content be if they couldn't talk about Devin and LaPon? Stop it. I'm not a content thief. And these people got to eat too, you know. Albeit not beef. The fuck? I don't trust the guy who doesn't eat steak and drink a good beer. Testing. That's a sexy gripper right there. And it actually gets pretty strong. Uh, I got this off Amazon, whoever's asking. So look at it'll 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 go all the way out to like really wide. And if you want to just kind of crunch it, like... You can crunch it. Look at real small. Look, little baby, little baby pumps. And then you can make the you adjust from here to make it harder, like this. Oh, oh, gonna get harder. It's killing me. Harder, killing right? Me. Nice. Look, sexy. I don't hear myself now, but then again, I don't hear you. That's the problem. So. Oh, I hear you a little bit. You hear me a little bit. I can hear you plenty fine. If people can hear you, I can run with this. I'm a deaf motherfucker. I used to have a nail gun going off in my ear like eight hours a day. You can hear this? I can hear it. I can run it, I guess. All right. We got something to work with, for goodness sake. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I think you can hear us. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to wake up my entire household tonight on this show. That's all right. They're going to forgive you because they know that you're fucked up anyways. <laughs> This what this is the commitment. This is the commitment. Anyway, Rob, my goodness, bees in bonnets. People piss me off. We're not talking about Devon or Levan tonight. That's the, the limit of talking about Devon and Levan is saying that we're not going to talk about Devon and Levan. Is that right? Right. Because I mean, God, fucking, hello. How much more can you say? I mean, we'd have to start talking about the guy's shoe size, his blood type, and everything. It's been analyzed to death. It's been so analyzed. I feel like I saw into the future. Like Honestly, fucking Doctor Strange. I've seen all the outcomes. I've seen everything. <laughs> it's almost, I already feel like I lived it. I'm actually tired for these motherfuckers already. I, 
I asked my, I, I just visited my mum and dad on the weekend, and I asked them who's going to win out of those two, and she, and they said, uh, we, we don't care, we're over it. <laughs> so even my, my parents said they were over it. Right, right. I mean, oh, you could only prelude to the kiss so much. I mean, it's, it's, you can only do so much. Guys, if you're asking about my sexy headphones, you can get them at five below. I don't know if you have stores like that around you, <laughs> but five on my head. Good to say. Five below, bro. Wow. These are the booger <laughs> headsets and the cheapies. So you can talk shit to kids, little kids at video games when you smoke them. Because I'm not above emoting over somebody after I kill them with my shoddy. I'm just letting you know. Okay. I'm going to turn. Oh, fuck this. I hate this, this audio situation. Anyway, Rob. Don't sweat it, Ryan. You're getting too worried about it. We, we, we are who we are. We're arm it's wrestlers having right, a podcast. Right. We're not See, podcasters I'm... talking about arm wrestling. That's a okay. difference. I bet okay. you Prod Deep would have this shit down. No problem. <laughs> but then again, that guy's weak as fucking duck sauce. Let's get out of here with that shit. Okay. Okay. I'll, Let's you know, move pulling, on. I, next weekend, I'm pulling Matt Dayurangi in an eight-man tournament. That thing. You've met Matt Dayurangi now. Yeah. I think I'm going to beat him. <laughs> Well, you saw how James English beat him, which in the yeah. first round, which is very, uh, yeah. anytime you see a blueprint, that kind of creates a lane of opportunity of like, it's plausible. That's what I mean. I, I, I think you'll beat him because you're big and you're, you're, you're all thick down and shit. Yeah. And, and, and I noticed your wrist looks significantly bigger <laughs> than even Matawangi's or Matawarangi. Look at that. Two, two what a specimen. Right there. Oh man! Anyway, I, what was I, the I, deal I, with the I, Coke bottle, though? I just—I don't know. I just—I just post stuff that goes viral on the internet, man. And all that—that—that—that that, that, that photo. The first time I posted my my wrist next to a it was a one point two five liter th Coke. It the the post blew up. The post went on Instagram and it, it hit like three and a half thousand likes within twenty four hours or something. I was like, whoa, that's that's a bit abnormal. What's going on with that? So I chucked up another one and it kind of did it again. So, but then everyone was whinging that. No one has a 1.25 liter Coke, so I had to get a two liter Coke. So I got a two liter Coke and did it. And now, yeah, that's oh, so it. you had like a that 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 moved the dial that picture. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's interesting. See, I don't, man, I don't think of stupid shit like that. You know what I mean? Dude, you got, I think you about got, like real like, terms. I, like, I, I, why I'm would you take you. a picture next to a fucking Coke bottle? See, I think about like <laughs> things like the way your dad and your grandpa would. Really, I'm like an old man reincarnated into a middle aged body. That I don't think about dumb shit like I'm gonna take a picture next to this Coke bottle and people are gonna love it. That's fucking crazy to me. But guess what? That's why I have such a small following and there's some idiot out there doing super dumb shit driving a Lambo. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Look, look, at the end of the day, this is one of the weird, twisted things about arm wrestling is that we're in this unfortunate situation where our sport's just not big enough that we don't we don't have the the luxury of just sticking to what we do we actually have to be these these kind of half clowns as well and i i i i me do my lift in the rain the other day there, there was a bit of method to that madness as well but that video is going gangbusters and everyone's everyone's triggered by it saying why on earth is ryan doing his lift in the rain well that that one's bringing in the money <laughs> yeah I, I it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense to me I mean, I've seen some weird ass videos where guys like chopping wood in the rain and people are loving it. Like chopping wood. Some guys are getting on about the cardio. You got some soccer moms that are all hot for the muscles in the rain, the wet muscly look, like a one of those storybook novel covers. It's like ticking all the boxes, but the same guy got other videos of chopping wood on a sunny day just getting dusty and it's got like one one thousandth of views. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I stopped trying to understand people a long time ago. I can't even figure out the fucking people I'm related to, <laughs> let alone uh, the society. People I knew my whole life still surprising me every goddamn day. Hey, Karaoke Vic, uh, you got a super chat there. 20 US dollars. Thank you very much. Hey, yeah, man, so this I is appreciate just it. It isn't easy being us. I mean, we're just trying down here. I'm in my studio. You can see I work really hard on the backdrop, the lighting. I got my suit on. But look at this. <laughs> Fucking dude, guy's been doing some benching. Do you, my do side you pressure is gonna be crazy. I know how you like do that I, side pressure, Ryan. I got that yeah. Ron Bath relentless driving side pressure now. I, don't, Ooh, think, I don't think you do. I don't think you do have the side pressure. Oh, now. I but think look. you're really gonna be surprised. I think you are looking at a caption of a person 
that was already damaged when you came into the sport. Fair enough, pew pew. I do think though that I mean, a lot of the time when someone has great hand control, someone has great rotation, it be kind of has this illusionary feel for the guy who's losing, like as if it's side pressure. But if your hand stayed flat like Ron's did, I don't think you have the side. In oh, the game. brother, do you think these triceps came out of nowhere? That was a made to push, homie. Look at look at this, Ryan. Show me your fucking triceps. <laughs> Again, show me your triceps. Dude, those things are these you know these boots are made for walking? These fucking things are made for pushing. I didn't do it because I had an insecurity and an injury. It doesn't mean I can't. Let me tell you something. Okay. You was about okay. to find out real soon. And a lot of people are gonna find out. So so I mean you like I have side pressure. Hundred I mean? percent I have side pressure. Okay. And a lot of it. Side pressure is one of those things that that I trained for a season. I remember you you actually hammered me for training it for a season. Like the, I was training it excessively. I was really hot. Well, isolated. I hammered you because you thought that like it was the end all be all. You were like side pressure versus back pressure. Which wins? Like there was like you know a fucking face off like Wolverine versus Hulk. It's not as simple as that. Like there's a combination of other attributes that make that difference. Yeah, the side pressure against Ron that I felt was bothersome for me. I was like, hang on a second. He shouldn't have that much side pressure given our hand and wrist scenario. But he did have his peck and shoulder engaged where I had my – I was leaning back and separated. Are you a peck forward shoulder guy? Is that what you're saying? That That's how you're side Yeah, if I get in? positive on it, when I feel – if I get positive on it and I can get on it, I got a good strong shoulder roll, you know, at least from what my opinion of a good strong shoulder roll is. I, I believe that – um I have, I have a really good strong shoulder roll. Hey, Dizzy but yeah, of course, I don't think you can really press that. from not positive Dizzy, angle. I, 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 I'm certain you couldn't press finish me. I, 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 there's no way you could press finish me. Oh, my fucking God. You had, You're like, one of those. No, you, I, I, you'd have you to... can't just believe it. <laughs> look at I'm Billy Mays Hayes. I'm selling you the fucking product. Just buy it. And then wait. <laughs> if you call now, I'll throw in an extra fucking hook or top roll or strap bounce on your ass, but I can definitely press finish you. Listen, what makes me different than Ron Bell? You're we're about, we're, we're almost the same height, shorter, um, and I'm younger and stronger. Arm. Your arm's but, not as long. Your, your elbow to wrist. Elbow to wrist length. Actually, you know what's wrist. funny? I, I have sure, oddly right. like ape-like arms. My arm, elbow to fingertip, is the same as Devin's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, your hand is massive. I'm saying your... Yeah, my hand wrist. will make a difference. But then again, I believe right now my wrist is better than Ron's. Okay. I'm just saying, man. Does Ron have these fucking things? <laughs> hey, Dizzy Dude, look at that. I look, like, I look like when Arnold says, did the pump and iron shit. He says, two great guys, amazing personalities. RBG, you're awesome, bro. Huge fan. Thank, Thank you, you, dude. Does. Do you like my Mario, headset? It looks like it came Mario right out of a Vicks. Star Wars fucking theme. Okay. Karaoke Vix come in with another uh, tell Ryan to take a picture of the settings. I have, but I'm still not happy. I need, I need it. I'm, I'm literally going to hire someone. Yeah, like if I was one percent less hearing, I'd be struggling. But that's okay because then I feel like you're talking nice to me, even if you're being a dick. And then I'm kind of yelling at you, which fits the yeah. model of what we're doing here. <laughs> and I'm actually yelling. I'm actually yelling. But, Are you? Uh, thank you. Very and then we got one more super chat, and then we're all caught up in the super chats. Todd and Oleg's love child. Are we Jay on steroids and? Er is Hermes Gasparini dead serious? There we go. Is that is that a, is that an accusation from Hermes Gasparini? No, he's or? saying if I was on steroids, I would be Hermes. Like I'd be basically oh, okay. Hermes, but that's not true because I'm bigger and stronger than Hermes was when we were as an Addy. So I'd probably be even bigger and I better. Meet, I'd I be number one Hermes. in the world. Thank you, Hermes Super in, Chat. I did meet Hermes in 2015 at the Malaysian World Championship. He was competing in the 85 kilo title and i think he finished first or second but it was the 85 kilo class but bro like i was i was i was a 90 kilogram guy at 18 years old you know what i mean yeah still had yeah. still had maybe 18 back then the rest of the gains after that came little incremental <laughs> shit i don't get those 44 percent gains no more ryan but you, you know what one percent at a time on, adds up a lot you're gonna get on trt when you're old I am old, motherfucker. I already feel it. Do you, but no. do, you get your test, do you get your test levels checked? Have you ever had them checked? Bro, I don't even go to a doctor. I'm terrified of doctors. 
Can you they always tell me some bullshit. Can you, can you, when I was uh, ripped I, I, as I'd, shit. I'd love to actually know. Just like, legit. Can you just tell us what I just, I think the world would love to know what your natural test is. You know what? Like. Maybe someday if I could actually get like my YouTube to grow, I'll do the whole panel and shit for the sake of YouTube. Maybe I'll sell out. But I don't even go to a fucking doctor. I went to a doctor years back when I was ripped. And I'm talking probably single digit body fats in my 20s. I was in wicked yeah. good shape. And, but I was like 210, 200, 210 pounds. But they put me on the hype chart and was like, I want to talk to you about something. I was like, oh, fuck, what is it, right? Uh, I don't know, blood pressure, drinking, something. It's like, <laughs> your weight. I was like, oh, yeah, fucking. I was in a tank top. It was summertime. I was working on a roof. I was tan. I was sexy. I had the fucking ripples. I was so ripply down here. Your weight. I'm like, yeah, it's right on, dude. Next, next tournament, right? He's like. You're heavy. He treated me like a fat fuck. He treated me like a fat bitch. <laughs> and you know what? I asked him a question. I was like, wait a minute. So for my, he's like, for your height, you shouldn't be over like 185, 190. I'm like, yeah. but do you count for muscle? He's like, I'm just telling you the chart. I said, so if Arnold Schwarzenegger walked in here and he was like 235 and he was on the stage, would you say he's overweight? He said to me, and I quote, I'd have to see his chart. I said, he's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's like, well, and I went, I'm done with you. I got to go. I, Need a new I, doctor. I, and after yeah. that, I never went to a doctor again. Guy called That's me fat, enough. basically. He had to sit down with me, Ryan, about my <laughs> fucking weight like I was a fat fuck. You know what that does to a guy like me? I'm not a crazy egomaniac, but I'm not going to say I don't have an ego and I can't be subject to getting hurt. That hurt me. That yeah. guy put me aside uh, it, it, and, and told me I was fat. BMI is a load of, load of rubbish. It's, it's an absolute waste of time. I've, I've got a set of scales at home that I weigh myself on da daily that digitally logs everything. And it's my own app is constantly telling me I'm obese. Now, I'm, I am carrying more fat than I should, but I'm not obese. But anyway, my, my, uh, my scale reckons I am. But seriously, though, get your... I would love, and I'm sure everyone in the chat would love, to know what your natural test levels are. Like, I, not, I suspect not, I have not, high testosterone. This True is story. not a at all. We just want to know. We just want to I know. know. I suspect I have high testosterone because I'm a very aggressive individual. And, and all the curses that they say testosterone like, makes you and what you feel and whatnot, I feel like I have a high level of. As well as, honestly, when I do work out, I, I see my body respond really, really, really well when I do. And it's, mm. you know, for one reason or another, I haven't. Another, I haven't. But when I do, I'm able to put on muscle and strength pretty rapidly. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe I maybe I got something. I think Doug Ehrlich asked me one time if I had, like, what is it called? Like, myostat or something? Like, a problem myostat yeah, yeah, where yeah, you yeah. can build muscle that's, like, the odd. And it doesn't shut off the muscle building. I don't know. Maybe I'm fucked yeah. up, Ryan. You know, just leave me alone. Let <laughs> me be fucked up over here. I'm still trying to fix my friggin' audio in the meantime. Just so I'm you know. still trying to play anyway. with this gripper. You guys are gonna get one of these if they even make them anymore. Yeah. Hey, what do you think about people like Brian Shaw and Bob Sapp in arm wrestling? Did you see Bob Sapp on the table? I didn't see Bob Sapp. I know that he was a football player and he played around with K1 and MMA. Let me show you. Let me um, show you. Let me show you something. Hang on, two seconds. Yeah. Bob Sapp looks all right to me. Yeah, well, it depends on who he's pulling. Everybody looks good in their highlight reel. Now, it's not saying these guys aren't strong, but there's also, we, we really uh, romanticize very big skeletons in this sport. And there's something to be said. Brian Shaw has got a world-level hand strength, and he's a world-level strong man. But when you have a lever that long, it can be used against you if somebody mm -hmm. cuts across on it, and now you're you're hanging like somebody that could do a one-arm pull-up. You better be able to do a 200-pound curl if I cut across on you, that's how people figured out how to beat Cleve Dean was mm -hmm. instead of trying to go into that hand and let him dictate guy like John was like, bam, get in there and down on his arm. And now that big six foot seven arm, He's you've got a 200 pound yeah. man leaning on it. Yeah. And guess what? Everyone that was able to chop Cleve Dean, not everybody, but of that es like echelon, Virgil Arcieros and, and John Brzezinks and, and guys like that were able to beat him when uh, beforehand he was unbeatable 
So a longer arm, I think there's a sweet spot of skeleton for the dimensions of an arm wrestling table. And I don't think that bigger is always better. People always say, like, imagine if Shaq came into the sport. I'd be like, yeah, he get pinned by everyone who hooks him. Congratulations. I like Because as soon I as you learn to arm wrestle, your natural uh, reflex when somebody puts pressure in your hand is to flex it anyways if you learn. So if somebody puts a little yeah. pressure in your hand and you want to flex it and then they just shoot at you, you're going to find yourself like this. Yeah. And when you got an arm I, that I long... It. I liked what I saw with Bob Sapp there. Like, normally when you see big new guys, they don't... They don't put the load into their hand. He was just pocketing that pressure in his hand real nicely. He had a good drag. You could see he was defending with, with wrist flexion, drag, and pronation. He wasn't even really using much other than the, the superior hand control, which I find rare for a brand new. I don't know how much he's pulled, but that video was just two days ago. So Yeah, I think that, that, that arm wrestling is becoming kind of like a, a buzz topic for people getting views with strong men and stuff like that. Like, if you look at something like Larry Wheels, who's got a great channel, he gets great views from arm wrestling. Like it, we we sell ourselves short, saying that we're Nietzsche and unknown. But the people who mm. jump out there, we've seen guys like Jesse James jump in there, Juji Mufu jumped in there. A lot of influencers jump in the arm wrestling realm because it does turn the dial. Can you beat this grandma? Can you beat this grandpa? It it it, it turns the dial, and it does. And people are interested in it. Who knows how much these guys are playing around? And who knows how good that? Do we even know if that was a stage match? Was that guy sitting there like this, like? Because he looked like he just went like this with him. Like a little bit of video gamey, shoulder rotation-y. You don't know where someone's at. Now, he could be incredible. Bob Sapp was a humongous human being. Yeah. But you don't know until you get him out there. Am I going to believe that he's going to jump in and be something? And how old is the guy? I mean... He must, he, be, he must be super old. He must be super yeah, old. Yeah, he's old, anyway. old and shit. Well, I think Brian that, I Shaw's think got potential, but he's going to have lanes that yeah. are really good. And there's going to be vulnerabilities. I think there's a perfect skeleton for arm wrestling, for versatility, to not be victimized by top roll or hook. And you can play He's both. About, about six foot three? I think between six foot and six foot four, maybe. I think when you start getting longer, you have vulnerabilities. Um, but also, depending on the skeleton, there could be taller guys that have adapted. But like when you see Vitaly at the table, he squats down. He's vulnerable. Like, his only lane, we look at how he pulled. Of course, people say he's got a shoulder problem and this and that. But, like, mm -hmm. Dave was, like, pushing through, and he didn't have a real answer, but sitting down there into that spot. You don't see Vitaly ever get into that, like, have to grind it or bang it through or push on somebody. He kind of has yeah, his yeah. money, and that's it. He just takes that bag and runs with it. I, I, I agree with you, but, you know, like, there, there's a part of me that, I got like I got a nephew that's six foot six and he's only sixteen years old and he and he's like he's telling me oh I hope I don't keep going and I'm like well shit I think it's pretty cool to be six foot six and above because you got a yeah you got a lot of options that a lot of other people were just only dreaming of and I I, I can't help but feel like like I've often seen big guys like I got Marcus Satira in my club who's six foot five and one hundred and seventy kilos where I've thought if I could just implant my brain into his body for movements and not and and all that sort of stuff. I feel like, like I just feel like I could do a lot if I had a frame like that. Uh, I, I'm yeah, I mean, frame is one thing. Musculature is another thing. And then there's also being strong. You know, there's a lot of big guys, and, and it's hard for society to understand, but there's guys out there that could be 150 pounds that are just, not by trickery, flat out stronger than the guy who's 300 pounds. Sometimes the 300-pound guy, if you drop them down to, like, almost single-digit body fats, He's no more bigger muscular than the guy who's 170 pounds anyways. Some of these guys carry a lot of, you know, there's not a big difference in horsepower between a guy like Zoloev and a guy like, uh, uh, we'll say, Gennady. There's not a big yeah. difference in horsepower. Maybe yeah. when Gennady stands up on it with his shoulder and he really drives in there. But when you're talking about, let's not forget, Zoloev <laughs> at the time, an apex predator in the super heavyweight class was Alexei Semarenko. And Zoloev was able to snatch Alexei Semarenko up in his money and beat him in his money. So, in the horsepower range, people will play it like the super heavyweights are way out of there. Even Todd Hutchins said it. It's not a really big difference from even like a 200-pound class to a super heavyweight class as far as raw torque. Like, you're going to get some weird skeletons and weird hands and shit like that. Levon's a very outlier. He take it to the extreme, as did Dennis. But let's talk about the other 98%. Well, you, you, you've, you're someone who has pulled... Uh, Dave Chafee, you've pulled a lot of the guys that are 
that are genuine USA super heavyweight best in in history books. What what's the difference in power output? Like like top end, how how much difference is the two twenty pound class? Are you talking about the outliers, like the very very best? Yeah, yeah. The best. Okay, so it's so different if I there. compare like Dave Chapey to Mike Solaris, because Dave Chapey at one point in time was like probably the best in the world at one point. Yeah, maybe, maybe two thousand fifteen. Okay, or something so if like you start that, talking yeah. maybe like um, Tim Bresnan's top two because he's like top ten, top five at different times, but like. Pulling with somebody like Todd Hutchings, who's like maybe 230, 225, and pulling with somebody like Tim, well, we've seen them pull. It's not a lot of difference in torque output, just different directions. Um, John was able to dominate super heavyweights as a as a 220 guy. Um, same with Ron. Um, I don't think the power output is much different it, we, until you get to like the really extreme cases like like maybe like Levon and maybe where Devin's headed and um, mm. w but we don't know. We don't know. I actually remember in top eight, I saw kind of like a few kind of like dick measuring matches with like Prudnik and uh, Levon and Levon kind of tucked it and he went to go for it in a hook against him guy, Evgeny and he bounced off him. And Prudnik was like, even saying to the camera, he was shocked that he was able to like put the brakes on Levon and what it felt like. Cause with Levon's size and how strong he is in his gym lifts, he figured he was got run over. And I definitely believe that there's spots that somebody like Prudnik or Rostam even, or somebody like that could, could make Levon a victim. I do believe that. I do believe he's got holes like a Clev Dean that somebody could beat him. Yep. What about when people like bloody Crazy George Izakowicz gets into his nasty nonsense sort of Kings move that he's got, and he can stop people like Travis. I've seen that that happen in history where someone that small can stop him like i said yeah, the guy he doesn't get much love and um artem tanov came over here and he was a walk champion and bounced off of crazy george couldn't do anything with him and of course he gets into super heavyweights and when he finds his lane yes he throws super heavyweights guys like earl wilson and mike gould and and travis and god knows how many others do they just laugh when they feel it because they know it's uh, uh it's already over it's like standing in quicksand it's already over yeah yeah have you ever pulled crazy george no no i do think that i'd be a problem for him because the people who have beat him have been guys with really strong wrist flexion and hands like a guy who always had his number was denny dubray uh yeah. another guy from canada that was my first super match ever was denny dubray and really really strong like dominant hand and wrist and I think uh, Dal Antonio got a few wins on him. Same way, like really cup him under first. So instead of letting him get out here to this balled up like King's move, they turned him like palm up first. And then they could work him. And, and the King's move wasn't as effective. But no, I never pulled him. It's impossible when you meet him. It's like there's zero fucking chance I won't trash this guy. He's just, have you ever met him? <laughs> I haven't met him, no, no. People call him Papa Smurf because that's exactly... <laughs> I mean, maybe they don't call him Papa Smurf. Maybe I'm making that up and I associate him with Papa Smurf. But he's like a little, like, short. And he walks around like a bag man, like a, like a trash man. Like, like he's got a same sweatshirt with holes in it. And there's nothing about him that even looks oddly physically imposing. And he just starts beating everybody. It's fucked up, man. And, of course, I have my opinions on the King's move. But that's my opinions, right? Right? Uh, we could go on about that. But the guy's winning. And I'll tell you what. I don't care if it's a bone lock. I cannot let... 170 pound 165 pound man even hang here i gotta break something I, something's gotta break now i know a lot of people fall victim to it travis doesn't have my grit or my fucking fortitude i and as much as you think i couldn't press you ryan i fucking could and i would press crazy george ryan i will press your ass you had a nine inch pad at that arm gods you better cut that nonsense ryan hey, you better come I'm correct gonna, i'm gonna make it I, I, i'm gonna make a, a, a an attempt to fix my audio let me tell me if this fixes anything. How's that? Anyone hear me? No. I can hear you. Can You're hear still, you. Low, still low, but that's okay. Why? That's okay. Why am I fucking low? Now I'm echoing. So I'm angry. Echoing. I can't think straight tonight. Legitimately, I'm that pissed off at it that I just can't think straight tonight. It's pissing me off. Anyway, no echo for you still. Me? Low. Me? Yeah. Oh, the oh I can hear a, echo I can hear a little echo now. Yeah, people are saying. Oh, I hear a lot of echo. I hear a lot of echo. Yeah. You, Brian, why'd you fuck it? 
There we go. Okay, now, now we're good. Go again. Okay, that guy's gone, but now no one can hear me again. So good. That's okay. They just need to hear me. We'll carry the show. <laughs> Do you know sign language? Oh, man. Anyway, you're not going to press me. I, I, you, that, I don't even need to explain why. I'm just. I'm not going to impress you. You're already impressed. Look. <laughs> hey, we got a you question. You saw the game, bro. We got a question in earlier tonight. We put out a call for some uh, pre-questions before we got on the show. And uh, Gerard Kieran sent in a question. He said, what is the the standard for club table etiquette? How do you prevent injury when you got a stronger guy and a weaker guy training? Um, I'll let you go first, Rob. I think as a whole in the sport, we train wrong. I think a lot of people get together and they just work on like full kind of like they feel pressure and they treat it like a ready go and they fire on each other. And then some point in time, maybe the stronger guy realizes he's whipping the weaker guy's ass and he just holds him like a donkey and the other guy just bounces around and neither one of them really get much. I think we should be doing more drills, like teaching the guy to like how to move and you work him back to center. Okay. How to move, how to move. And then in different positions, and you strengthen and fortify those angles. I don't think we should be trashing on each other. Ego. We all want to feel something. But once you get past that, I think that there's uh, a whole different way of approaching training that very few people, if any, are doing it right. I think we're really putting the beating on each other and doing ourselves a disservice when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand working with a person. I had a guy one time that used to come to my house. And it was only me and him. And we used to drill with each other. Like, I would drag out on him. He would drag mm -hmm. out on me. But I learned to use the the pad. I learned to use my body, what felt comfortable, vice versa. And then while he's making his offense stronger, I was making my defense by learning how I would turn and, and contort my body. And it all became like we were very complete throughout the table. And we made each other really good. We both went up like this. And we made each other really good. It was a good time for me in arm wrestling that I was very strong and very complete. And uh, it, I just think that when you got a weaker guy, you have an opportunity, but you also have a responsibility, you know, because it's so easy to just trash somebody out, hurting their wrist, hurting their hand, fucking blowing people backwards into negatives. It's it's garbage. Yeah. Hey, Lawless Luca, Luca, Lucha Jaws, thank you for the two US dollars best M MF and idea for a live stream ever. Just Thank say you, it, Ryan. Just say it. <laughs> no, it's I'm good. Go. You can be that I'm, guy. I'm the good cop. You're the bad cop. I'm the good all cop. Right. You're the bad <laughs> cop. <laughs> so in my best New England accent, for all you guys who try to think it, we drop the R's on the end. It's not an R. It's an A-H. It's R. It's motherfucker. Am I louder now? Everyone's, everyone's telling me. Everyone's telling me my volume's up all of a sudden. I did not even touch a setting, for goodness sake. Oh, it's brand new. It's because I put in this sexy microphone right here. <laughs> what happened? What just happened? No, it's not even plugged in, guys. I'm just fucking trolling everybody. Rel relax. <laughs> I just like God. the way it looks. Now I look professional. I did not change anything. I, okay. All Dude, right. we're ready to roll now. Two hours straight. Let's go. All right, Let's ladies and line. gentlemen, welcome to the show. We now have two microphones that seem to be working and no echo. I can't believe what's happened. This is the problem, Rob. Shit changes without a reason. I didn't touch China, anything bro. last time. Last time it was, us. last time it they, was like they called might Uncle not be John. On you, but they're spying on America. It's China. Is, oh, I can't believe it. It's because no, of fucking touched. Biden. All right. Anyway, we're we're on. <laughs> we're on. We're, we're we're on. Now I can tell you why you're not going to press me. I can tell you why you're not going to press me. You know, you people have been giving me so I'm, much. People you're already impressed. Just say it. People have been giving me so much. Uh, crap about my lift that i'm doing and i know you're a big fan of it uh, i don't know if you've actually tried it as i do it yet to see what it fully feels like but but the reason that i do that lift is the when i picked it up for the first time it felt like the way i arm wrestle now some people will disagree with how i arm wrestle some people say oh ryan lets his pronator half go and then he fights kind of on the defense and that's true my strongest side pressure lane is when my 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 hand is quarter turned quarter supinated and then i drop into side pressure that's just my strongest lane it always has been and this lift really hits that groove one thing that i learned about myself when i lost to coach ray and this was talking to coach ray and sanders and Giannis afterwards they said to me you have to just you have to be who you are you have to take your race 
and actually play to your strengths and build counters from there. So this is me in this lift, finding a lift that feels like, holy crap, I've just found the lift that feels like my genuine ace on the table. So that's why I'm doing it at the end of the day. Well, I mean, there's nothing more to say to that, that that's, that's good. Exactly. You have to, uh, it takes people a long time to find out who they are sometimes. Sometimes people never do. So when I got into arm wrestling, I, I used to have an expression that was, I didn't lose at arm wrestling until I learned how to arm wrestle. So when I came into arm wrestling, I was very strong. I came from a grip strength. And because I had like big arms and like a strong man type of build, um, guys figured they would roll me, but I was a, you know, world elite grip guy and I would just grab people hard and I was just crushing people across sideways and I was winning tournaments right out of the gate in the open category. Then I went to go train with people and they taught me what they did, what worked for them, mm -hmm. how they protected their hand, but I didn't have the vulnerabilities they had. So now I'm up here, high post, hands not really in the game coming out here like this, finger walking, and I'm in wars with guys I should be crushing. Now, I'm getting by, but it was a struggle. And I started, like, after, like, a year of that, I'm like, the fuck, I'm in such trouble with guys I should be killing. I started looking at Ron Bath and John Brzezink and whatever videos were out there. I was like, why are they just sweeping to the side? And I'm over here like this. I know my <laughs> hand was as strong as theirs. And then I really started paying attention. And I had a guy, it's a funny story, a guy always used to give me fits. We'd be like this in the middle of the table, finger walking, finger climbing, everything, because I was arm wrestling the way somebody taught me how they arm wrestle. And I figured that experience, so I did what they did. And I'm like, I got to do what works for me because I got a different set of build and characteristics. And mm -hmm. I actually, and we back in the day, our, my place used to have like 15 tournaments a year up here. So like every three weeks, you'd be at a tournament. And there was one motherfucker who always gave me trouble, like one minute long matches. And I said, fuck it. I watched Ron and John. I was like, I'm just going to clamp this guy and grab him and sweep sideways with him instead of turning out and see what happens. And in the load up, it was terrifying. <laughs> I thought my hand was going to go, my wrist was going to go. And I yep, swept yep. sideways with him. And it was a half a second match. And it was never competitive ever since 10 years later. And actually, everyone in New England, I started dominating all of New England and everywhere I went thereafter. As soon as I realized, like, I was letting myself in the game. But all the other time, I was taking myself out of the game. So for, for the guy who taught me, that worked for him. And he won like that and survived like that. But he didn't have my level of arm and hand wrist strength either. So I was cheapening myself. So finding your lane, I think, is a beautiful thing. And mm. there is no right or wrong way yet. This is no different than martial arts. Like, if you find something that scores wins, then take that's it. all yeah. that matters. It's scoring wins. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I've tried that lift. Before I pulled down... Um, uh, James Wall, I fucked with it and did like 115 pounds. But you put, nice you put clean. the, you put, you put the, you didn't put it over your wrist supinated. You, you just loop no, grabbed it. Yeah. I don't think that yeah. makes a big difference because from that angle, I have a really strong pronation. Like from the negative, from this part, like this mm -hmm. is really, mm -hmm. really strong for me. I mean, that's all speculation. I, I've been trying to learn my lesson about doing things like that, like heavy lifts that have kind of given me weird achy pains. You get a little older, you gotta be a little careful. Which I'm not. That, that's not be, I'm not Mother Teresa of the weightlifting world over here. I'm not careful. I am the, 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 the weightlifting version of the guy who goes to Rio de Janeiro for Carnival and fucks with no rubber on all weekend long. Like, I, I don't warm up. I don't stretch. I just throw clothes into the wind. Yeah. I go max lift from the first lift. Like, I'm the weightlifting version of AIDS right now. <laughs> okay, like, okay. I go right okay, to I the can... gym with no warm-up and throw on, like, as much as I can crawl first breath and go, roar! I'm lucky I haven't snapped something. I really am. But... but you, that's, that brings up an interesting topic because, I mean, one of the most one of the most common things that I see from non the non-arm wrestling crowd on social media, when they see not just my lifts but a lot of arm wrestlers' lifts, is they say, bicep tear incoming. or They, they, they all think we're going to tear our biceps. And look... Truth, truth is, some of us do, don't they? I mean, Gennady's done it, Devin's done it, but like, it is part of our sport that bicep is potentially going to go. But I think it's way less common than these people tend to think it would be. When they see that kind of side pressure, static curl, it freaks them out when, when people are holding 50, 60, 70 kilos even on that thing. But do you think, do you, do you actually think like, 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 
I don't feel like my bicep is even at, cl- at even at a slight risk of tearing. Honestly, like when I do these lifts, it feels like I've got so much other stuff going on in these lifts that it genuinely feels like there's not there's no problem there at all. Do you think do you think arm wrestlers are just are, are we conditioned different or is is it just that people aren't aren't aware of the biomechanics and they're not seeing how much inner elbow side pressure forearm flex is getting involved? Yeah, I, I well, I think I think it's all that. I think a lot of people are would really be they don't want to admit that how strong um arm wrestlers are like they they would be like they can't get their head around they know a guy like they might be a big beefy strong guy and they grab the 50s and curl them for sets at planet fitness and there's somebody out there that can that can handle you know a lock with 50 60 70 kilos you know they can't get their head around that because it's a person that's literally they've been told their whole life that they're stronger than everybody and they're the strong guy and now there's not a guy that's stronger than them. It's like twice as strong as them. And then there's a 50, there's a, there's a guy out there that's 140 pounds that's stronger than them. They can't get their head around that. But um, I think there's a conditioning process. I think that there is other attributes. But if you're talking even just on your bicep, also, without banging the drum, without getting into it, a lot of the tears you see are from rapid gains where guys get geared up and they get huge and their muscles get stronger and their connective tissue can hold. So I, well, I can, I can, I can, I can relate to that on my left arm. I got my first ever tear in December last year. It was in my left forearm flexor. I don't compete left. I don't train anything left other than my when I'm under a bench press or doing a lat pull down. But someone convinced me to get into the tournament on left. I pulled this this young dude. He was big, strong. He tried to flop, slip me, and I cut him off at center. And my forearm flexors went on my left. And I put that down to the fact that I've gotten stronger overall in the last few years and I haven't done anything on the table and haven't conditioned my left flexes. And it just went, I'm not used to that force. See you later. Yeah. I mean, there, there's also, that's how I hurt my shoulder pulling. I hurt my shoulder pulling Marcio and I literally went from quitting the sport and taking off a few years to going to pull Marcio. And when you're dealing with somebody who's that like explosive and joggy in all the directions, like it would have mm-hmm. been better for me to pull John because John's more smooth pressure. Something like Marcio hits hard. Then if it doesn't work, he throws his shoulder on it. Then he goes back to a top roll. Then he hooks. It's really joggy type pressure when you're not conditioned. I'm sitting there like fucking, uh, and then my shoulder tore. When your body's not used to that kind of torque. But I do think that a big majority of the people you see popping biceps, they're running a lot of gear too. Like their fucking shit is like stronger than their connective tissue can hold. And their muscles are stronger and it lets go. I mean, I've built my strength over a long period of time of lifting weights. I don't ever feel like when I load weight up, when I load weight up beyond my capacity, say it's 125% of my max, I want to hold a negative, I'll hold it and it will just open up and drag it down. So when somebody, if somebody were to be able to just drag me and roll me open, I don't think it's going to let go. I think my body has got enough strength and integrity that it will just drag open, you know? Yeah, how's this for camera work now? I just thought I'd change it up. My, yeah, my, we make can my see head. your fucking belly button. That's awesome. Make my I head wondering. not look so good. Yeah, look at that fucking yeah. wrist. Man. You got a tan and shit. Yeah. Nice. Look at that oh, wrist. Like, it's like it's like it's like direct continuation. Like there's you no know wrist is, there. Though? Now that I it's look like, at your hand, your hand is so much narrower than mine. Yeah, like it, it, fucking meat. yeah, it, 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 it looks weird, doesn't it? Like like that. The ratio is look at the this. Difference it goes between, like this. Yeah. My hand goes like this. Holy yeah. fuck, so, bro! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you could be like a Chinese masseuse. If so I you know, you know fucking, if I put a blindfold on and I went to the Turkish spa, and you swapped out for a prank with those little <laughs> Asian girls that were rubbing my head, I bet you I wouldn't even know that you were rubbing my head. Dude, dude, what? I, that that's actually really interesting. I've never actually like noticeably seen that ratio difference before. But this is one of the things that I like about arm wrestling. I like that every I believe every arm length, hand length, uh, palm width, whatever dimensions you have different, it comes with its advantages as well as its vulnerabilities. And I've always thought, I've always thought. A small hand, and I've said this to a lot of people. I said, if you have a small hand, you you can you can put your hand in that rice bucket and twist it a whole lot easier than the dude with the big hand can twist it, and that translates to drag and pronate, and especially in a strap. Hence, my sticky point is where it is. So, just put that up again, Rob. That look at your big bloody. 
That does make your wrist look so small, though. <laughs> yeah, my wrist is big, dude. I got a big wrist. It might not be nine inches big, but it's it's big by every standard. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's like people talk a lot about a long hand. And I've actually made that example, that, that, that case saying, like, I'm not just a long hand because I took a lot of pride where I was in grip strength, where I had very strong hands. So I don't want to be cheapened by, oh, God just gave me big hands. It's like, no, like my dad, my grandpa, they were all known for their strong hands. But I competed and I had uh, strong hands. And I'm like, I've known guys with big hands that now when you talk about a fulcrum and a lever that long, if it's not strong enough to really contain, it's now used against you. And think about somebody with a hand that's long like that. You're going to be more susceptible to getting popped if it's not up to snuff. You're going to be more mm-hmm. susceptible to getting. And then even like with a long hand, somebody can grab on it and like manipulate it. When it's bigger, if it's not up to strength, snuff it could be used mm-hmm. as a weapon against you it's a liability 100 percent, 100 percent. uno momento yeah, that's right i'm gonna i'll uh whilst rob's gone i'll say thank you to protectsafes.com he sent a couple of super chats through this is the second one thank you very much brother it says you are both savages and nerds cheers to you cheers guys thank you very much protectsafes.com i don't know what makes me a nerd is it the headset is it the mic quality or is it the fact that we love arm wrestling because real men arm wrestle bro yeah, I, 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 you do look good with the the, the headset on. It, it suits you. I like it's gonna... it, right? It gives me a professional flair, even though it's <laughs> and, not and, even plugged in. I like it. Look. And somehow we got we somehow we got to a point where it, where audio seems to be balanced and clear. If I so... could just get rid of this light behind me, this total eclipse of the heart, I think we'll be professional. Maybe I'll hang my wall poster behind me next week, so it'll be like me and me. <laughs> it'll be like like the Trend Twins, but like the Natty Twins behind you, like. <laughs> Going for it, Rob. I was looking through Reddit. I don't know if you're a part of Reddit. Oh um, man, I don't. Reddit's a cesspool. Reddit's like Reddit's like going into the yeah the the, the Please underground. Don't talk about the bad about myself is going to trigger me. I'm already having a bad day. <laughs> there's well, don't go to Reddit. There's, there's there's but you and I feature in Reddit a lot. If you scroll through Reddit, there's there's oh, a fair I don't bit. Want to but, know. but I just want to know. I, I'll I'll give you the nice version of it. What pathway are you you taking back to the top at the moment? People are accusing you of taking the soft approach. Oh, okay. I told you I was feeling spicy today. This shit pisses me <laughs> off. Soft approach. Okay. Okay. We're going to go there. All right. Listen, first of all, much love to John Brzezink. Goat. We love the guy. When he came back, he just arm wrestled. He pulled uh, Dimitri Kachin. He pulled... Paul, Chance, Pablo, whoever, he was just pulling. Now, when you guys only want to, there's a, there's a certain amount of pressure around pulling at East First, West, or King of the Table, like they're the only fucking tournaments that make somebody valid. That is a hell of an undertaking to take like a week out of your life. I'm just trying to get active and pull. But let's not play down the guys that I'm competing against. Brandon Allen made it on Devil Larry's deck of cards because the guy's a world-level power lifter and has a king's move. Yeah. And listen, I've trained with John Brzezink. John Brzezink doesn't give a lot of guys layups in practice. He likes to see where they're at and work them. And Brandon Allen's got some spots that he threw John Brzezink for some very sticky situations. And in the ready goes, when he got that shoulder positive, was pressing through Devin. Now, of course, it's practice, but Devin's known as a practice monster. He's known. Watch all his practice things. He just holds people. And, and, and Brandon Allen, when he got that positive shoulder, much like Eric's photo, was pushing through. So the guy has power that's respected by the elites of the elites of the sport. Ben Brooks, same thing. James Wall is a super fucking stud, and everyone wants to say, like, oh, well, last year he lost to this guy and this guy. Well, guess what? With the right nutrition, nutrition, and the right training, and a cerebral mind, a year it might as well be a fucking infinity on how people change. And we were on nine-inch pads. I think James Wall is certainly a world-level puller. Now, I'm not going to argue with you motherfuckers if he could beat a Zarab at 220. Fuck that shit. He is of that echelon, though. Trust me. I pulled Zarab. I pulled John. I pulled fucking Dave Chafee. I pulled Todd Hutchings. I can speak on these things. He's of that echelon. Doesn't matter if he beats them. He's of that echelon. And these guys, safe? What? What do I got to do? Go against number one to not play it safe? How's this? I'm not even on the fucking rankings. So how about this? If I'm not on the rankings, let me pull number 20 because I'm such a bum. And then I'll pull number 19. And number 18, but you won't let me do that because you know I'm so fucking savage. I'll kill all those guys. <laughs> so stop saying I'm playing it fucking safe. I'm not playing it safe. I'm arm wrestling. 
And you know what I'm doing? For the first time in a long time, I'm having a good time with it. But you guys That's are good to hear, man. And poor Jerome's going to feel the aches and pains of my saltiness because Jerome's elite. People go, oh, he lost to Matt Mask. Who cares a fuck? So did Devin Larry. I've seen <laughs> Matt Mask pin Devin Larry. I've seen John Brzezink get pinned by Matt Mask more than once. Is John Brzezink not elite anymore, you fuckers? Stop with the noise. <laughs> Just because somebody loses once upon a time. I've seen Vitaly lose to Dave. Is Vitaly a bum? Because Dave's a bum. And, and Dave lost to Michael Todd. We all know Michael Todd's a bum. How far down this fucking rabbit hole you want to go, you fucking tools? How's this? But now on, we're going to put a banner next to people that want to comment. <laughs> just like we used to do on the Northeast board. You get certain stars on your accolades. And it, based on your resume is what your opinion is worth. And I'm going to tell you all right now, you 99.999% of you have a dog shit resume. And the other 0.001%, they don't talk shit anyways because they know exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Every guy I pulled is a certified badass arm wrestler. It just looks like they're shit because I'm really fucking strong. Got <laughs> Yeah, I was... When I, hey, thanks for the uh, super chat again, Protect Safe. Uh, the r and I'm Geek Out and Geek In show. Thank you very much, man. Hey, yeah, uh, I, I was I was reading through Reddit, Rob, this afternoon, and my I, my wife was. Don't tell asking, me there's some shit on Reddit, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I was up at one o'clock this morning, Facebook bombing my mother, my sister, friends. I cut so many ties this morning at one o'clock. I was like a fucking ninjutsu. Let's go. Tell me what's on there. No, it, it's 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 just typical Reddit stuff. But my, my wife, as I was reading that, she was like, "Why why do you why do you read this stuff? Why do you do it to yourself?" And and it, 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 I can't help feel the same way about you. For me, it's a slightly different version of it. For me, I'm I'm very public about my goals. I've never been uh, like the, the the name of this show, overcome and overpower. For me, I'm the overcome dude. I'm the dude that just will just keep on going. And I think it must. I think it genuinely bothers people that I haven't quit the sport. There's been a many many chapters where people thought, "Oh, he's not going to make it here," and and, and I'll quit, and I don't, and I keep on doing it. And I'm, I'm at a phase now where I'm saying my goal is top ten in the world at 105. The the the, the Reddit crowd or the the credit the crowd that you described before as the 99.9 percent of of bums out there, um, they all will like to laugh and say, "There's no way you're ever going to get to top 100, or let alone top 10, let alone top 20, whatever." And I, my response to them is, "What? What? Are you the number twenty dude that's going to stop me from getting in, or what? Like, yeah, unless yeah. you're unless you're that number twenty dude that is going to bar me from getting into that ranks, zip it, because you have no idea of the comprehension, nor nor the comprehension of what it actually takes, how close I actually am, and how long away I am from getting in." And, and truthfully, there could be a guy that's number twenty that just matches up with you stylistically and gives you a shit ton of trouble. There could also be a guy that's number five that matches well with you and you crush. Yeah, That is the arm wrestling game. It's no different <laughs> than a combat sport. I just had a guy trolling on me on my YouTube. He loves trolling on me. He loves fucking pushing my buttons about the East and West because I lost a match against Sasha and Zarab. Sorry, I got thrusted against the number one guy at the 200 pound and the 220 pound <laughs> right out the fucking gates. You know, hooray. And he acts like that equals East. Like if you go to Russia... Every single person is Zarab. That's the baseline. I'm like, don't you realize, you fucking idiot, that Zarab's killing everybody in Russia too? He's not a representative of East. He won that big tournament before I pulled him and crushed everybody from the East. So it's not like, oh, you can't beat East. You're just a punk. Then the guys tell me how weak I am, and I go on his fucking YouTube, and the guy's bragging, all braggadocious, strict curling 135 pounds against the fucking wall. I'm like, you asshole. I was doing 135 pounds as a fucking teenager. I can almost do 135 pound one arm right now. And I can go get fucking hammered drunk and wake up tomorrow and fucking smash you. And how dare you talk to me this way? You better put some respect on that shit. I tell you right now, man, I would love to have a troll match. I want to get all the trolls in a room and offer the thousand dollar troll match and just smash (laughs) motherfuckers for a thousand at a time. They put in their ten dollar, twenty dollar entry fee. I yep. put up a thousand bucks. If you can beat me, and I just want to shred motherfuckers, and I want to let them get in the lick because I'm not like you guys, you pansy motherfuckers who go, "Oh, I pray for a speedy recovery." Nobody wants to get hurt. No, I want them to get committed <laughs> with their shoulder, and they go pop and break a motherfucker. I want to see humoruses come out the side. I want to see people emotionally, physically going to shock, annihilated. I want to see people like almost die. Like I'll kill a motherfucker. I will. I don't care. 
I, I don't know. Like this sport, I, I think. I mean, we're we're destined to it all the time. But like I said, because we're we're not a sport where we're 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 blessed enough that we can just do our thing and be separate from this madness. We have to we have to have a, a, a toe in each side of the, of the of the of the pool or whatever, and we have to we have to. We have to taste all this madness in order to be able to make enough money to just keep it keep it going. But I don't know, would you like it to change? Would Would you prefer this sport to be big enough that you didn't have to do? You just got the paycheck sufficient to arm wrestle, and you didn't have to say anything online. Or do you like this? Is that a serious question? No, because I would absolutely get cancel cultured because I'm not that guy who could be like like the <laughs> NFL players when they're supposed to sit down and go like yes and answer shit correctly. I'd be those guys you see that have spaz out moments on a fucking uh, reporter that's like, are you fucking crazy? I'd like to have an agent that goes, oh, you know, oh, Rob, sit down with your suit on, collect your zillion dollars, and just yes and thank you. I'd be one of those people that gets cancel culture because I would do something <laughs> stupid or get drunk and go on Twitter, which I don't even go on Twitter. But I can't, I can't let someone else speak for me. And God forbid I let my accolades speak for myself because I'm trying to do that. But God forbid... Six months ago, everyone bitched about me being active. Now I'm active as a motherfucker. I'm just flying around, going wherever. I actually lined up another match that's coming soon after Jerome Loud. I'm just banging, man. I'm going for it. And it's like, well, it's not that you're active. You're just not active enough in the right realms, pulling the right people. Motherfucker, I'm going to tell you guys right now, all you <laughs> persuasive motherfuckers, I will pull any European you want to bring over here to New England. Let their ass be uncomfortable eating my clam chowder. And then I got to go over there eating fucking borscht and drinking water out of a plastic jug with aluminum foil on it because you guys don't have a proper fucking water filtration system out of the tap. <laughs> what the fuck do I do in the middle of the night when I wake up dehydrated? I got to go look for my, my they look like juicy juices of water? Come on, there, yeah, I don't want to go to a third world country. Come over here, eat some lobster. <laughs> You'll be uncomfortable. You'll be fucked up. And then come on, Russell. I will not refuse any Eastern European match. At this point in time, I'm strong as a motherfucker, and I'll beat all of them. But, man, don't ask me to chase them. I don't want to chase them. There's plenty of opportunity here. That's like you being a guy who's at the, a nightclub in, like, Las Vegas. And there's ass everywhere. And it's like, well, you should see the ass in L.A. It's like, why do I need to go for the four-hour drive when there's plenty of ass right here? More ass than Robbie can handle right here. I don't need to go to L.A. to chase more ass. <laughs> No hey, the problem. White Wolf. The White Wolf. Uh, we met the White Wolf in Ireland, Rob. You might. You, I'm sure you recall the White Wolf. Yeah, man, I love that guy. He's the one who filmed the Pekka Cam. He said, uh, the "Sounds cam? like a great Arm Gods event. RVJ versus the Trolls, Marcus. There you go. Imagine that. You might even get the wish on an Arm God stage just to have the countless trolls roll in one after the other. That would be. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the fucking dude. They wouldn't be able to look me in the eyeball because you know what the problem is." And I'm also a greedy, weird person that can turn weird. Like, uh, you ever see when a horse is about to kick someone? They get that little <laughs> bit, like, like weird shit going on. Like, I can yeah, get, like, yeah. things misunderstood real fast. Well, people, when, when people meet me, I, I they they, gen, they normally come up to me. Well, the ones that introduce, they, I'm sure there's some that hang back that still reserve their opinion. But I usually get people come up to me and say, oh, you're actually a lot nicer than I thought you were. I thought you were a, a fool. But then when they meet me in person, they say, oh, okay. And it's different in that way. So we have the different, different in person, maybe. I don't uh, think anybody thinks I'm an asshole. At least they don't tell me. I think they think I'm a good time guy. I'm, a, I'm who I portray. I'm, I, I'm not like. A, you're, I'm a lot like and, you're a lot bigger and you're a lot bigger and a lot bigger and stronger. I, I'm very New England. I'm a ball breaker, fast talking, loud. You know whatnot. I can get aggressive, but I don't really push that around unless somebody really calls for it. I feel like when you and I met, we had a very nice yeah. interaction. Hence, we're here on this beautiful <laughs> fucking tragedy of a podcast where there's echoes. We sound like we're in a fucking cave. Next time, let's just go into a cave and film this. That way there, when your audio's fucked up, we blame the cave. We've, we've got, we've got something to blame. See, I still don't know. I still don't. All day today. I still don't know how it fixed it tonight. But White Wolf, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Josh Rose coming in with a super chat. I think this one's on your channel, uh, Rob. He says, great show, guys. Ryan, stop hiding my comments on your channel. You're with Rob now. I'll be 44% nice unless you say crazy stuff. I can't help myself. Josh Rowe. He, Josh Rowe. I, I, look, look. He, his, this, is a, this is a bit of a message to a whole lot. Like this, I probably have, I reckon I'd have 200 people shadow banned on my YouTube channel. Maybe even more. Like I don't think as much as Engin, but I think I do. No, here's the thing, dude. It's like, okay, I've been YouTubing for 11 years, right? As long as I've been arm wrestling, I started the channel the day I started arm wrestling. 
I have a certain level of toleration. Going through the seasons, I will ebb and flow on where my toleration is at when it comes to people baiting me. Okay, so when I'm in a good mood, bait me all you want, I'll let it go. But if you catch me when I'm in a bad mood and you try to trigger me, I'm just going to go, I don't need to deal with you. So, Josh Rowe, if you're in that category, man, you got no one else to blame but yourself. Look, I, I, I'll hey, dig bro, through. Listen, I'm in the same boat except <laughs> I don't take the high road. Like last night, I, got, I haven't been on Facebook in years, bro, years. And I yep. got on Facebook and took the opportunity to tell all the people I don't like how much I don't like them. Because my feelings were hurt, and I was feeling all by myself, <laughs> and I was having a very emotional night. And I got on there, and I blew everybody up. I was on people's comments. Not everybody, but just the people that needed to hear what I had to say. And listen, I would like to think that I'm above being a child. I would. I feel like I'm an intelligent human being. I know what I'm doing. I Sometimes I know, like, I'm like, what are you doing? But I feel like mm. if I don't say it, no one's going to fucking say it for me. And I want someone exactly. to know when they're an asshole. And if I don't say yeah. you're a fucking asshole, who else is going to tell you you're an asshole? It isn't like your next door neighbors will call up and go, Ryan, you know, about that thing you said to Rob, you're an asshole. No, they're just going to let it go. So <laughs> Rob's got to be the one to say that, Brian, you were, in fact, an asshole. And, you know, that's just me standing my ground. And a lot of people think I get triggered. And yeah. you are correct. So, I get triggered. So and, yes, <laughs> I read all those stoic books. And I try to be stoic. But guess what, motherfucker? That's just not me. I'm not a stoic person. I'm a high-strung fucking <laughs> chihuahua done fucked a pit bull somewhere. And we're both all strung out like this. I'm fucked up. I had a fucked up upbringing. And I'm a broken person. And I got a lot of baggage. I was up at 1 o'clock in the morning blowing up my mother's Facebook. No joke. Blowing her up about being a grandmother. What the fuck? Dude, I'm a broken person. <laughs> so whenever you want to just bang on me, just know you're dealing with a broken person and you're now bullying a person with handicaps and fucking deficiencies. There we go. Well, so, Josh Rowe, because you're super chatted, I will, after this live, go and unblock you from YouTube. So, but be oh, I careful. Mean, he's, a, he's a great guy on my John. YouTube, but if he's a dick to you, block him. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck him. All right, good stuff. I'm just good kidding, stuff. Josh Rowe. Thank you for the super chat. But yeah, I'm not but uh, money. if I thought you were a dick, I wouldn't even care about the money. The shadow, Ralph Field, to just to describe or explain the shadow ban that you're asking about, uh, on YouTube, you can hide a user so they can still watch your videos, they can still comment, uh, but no one else will ever see their comment, including the me, the creator. So that that's just what gets gets applied to most people that piss piss YouTubers off. Um, yeah, no one, you'll, no one will ever see your comments again. I'm, I, I, I've been shadow banned, I think, on a number of channels as well. But not that I troll people, but I just, yeah, I was an enemy of the sport for a while. I don't know if I've but. been shadow banned. I don't. I, um, I, I've definitely made comments to like, I've had a couple of troll accounts from East, East vs. West, like low key, like threaten me and shit. <laughs> Some scary things yeah, too. I'll I got, I got, I, I got a question. I'm traveling a little bit. I'm like, am I gonna get shanked by? Some fucking guy. I don't even know what's coming. I mean, at least let me know who you are. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm gonna, we're going to change a little bit of a, a, the tone. Go back to a bit more purist sort of arm wrestling. I want to no. know. I want to know. Okay. The year is 2030. Uh, who's the number one in the world? <laughs> <laughs> On this trajectory? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 2030. Who's the number one in the world? Um... Auden Larrett. No way. Don't say that. Don't hey, man. It all depends on what footsteps they want That's to too soon. That's too soon for Auden to be number one, yeah, man. No, honestly, that's, that's impossible. That's way too soon. Because honestly, the, the, the cynical side of me wants to see. No. Listen to me. Follow me here. Because, listen, good cop, bad cop, right? You're a good cop. Okay, okay. okay. You have, Starsky and Hutch, was there a good cop, bad cop? I didn't watch that. Punch anyways. Or no, I like Starsky. <laughs> Listen, dude. If you're gonna be good cop, bad cop, let's play it what it is. I don't think a lot of the players we see now are gonna be in 2030. I don't think so. No. Okay. I know who's still gonna be relevant in here. Me. And I know mm. my kids are gonna start pulling. Who's gonna be the best at that point in time is gonna depend on what changes we make. Is what Levon did to get to be Levon gonna be the new standard? Or is there going to be something happening in between there with leagues that dials it back? What if we have our first arm wrestling related death and everybody pulls it back a little bit? What if we don't and everybody wants to be like Levon because he's got the riches and the house in Georgia and the 
He's a fucking celebrity over there. And then now Levon is the new standard of the top 10. Impossible to answer depending on the direction of the sport. If we were all dropped on an island and had to hunt fish and do everything for our mm -hmm. own food and we were not able to get the external fucking influencers, it's a very different mm -hmm. top 10. I might be the best guy in the world in fucking 2030. But it's all going to depend on is that shit going to happen? Is it going to mm -hmm. be... The, uh, well, okay. Really, the X factor is. Hey, are, you, are, are, you, are you are you are you assuming when you say when you say Auden Larratt? Uh, I was are you Okay, thank goodness. I was about to but say. Like, <laughs> he's going to basically though. He will cut the curve of learning because he's going to go from what took Devin thirty years to figure out how to go from where Devin started to where he is now through training Look. and principle and theory and opportunity. Being Devin's kid. He is going to get uh, accelerated where what took Devin 30 years might take Auden 15. Yeah, but I do I agree. Think Auden how has long did genetic makeup is Devin? And that's not well, I mean, I mean, a bang on the kid. I don't want to no, bang on the I mean, kid. And I hate he, talking bad about anyone's child because I, I'm very sensitive with my own. And this isn't bad talk. I just think that the genetic makeup with Devin and Auden is different. They, he might be tall and he might be very invested in arm wrestling. But when I look at Milo, Milo looks a little more genetically related uh, as far as, like, the physicality than 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 Auden. Um, but I was being – it was like a facetious type fucking off-the-cuff. You know, you know. Because I, I, I can't – Talking that, about that genetics. There's so much changes year to year. Put it this way. Would anyone have seen Levon coming if you gave it, like, a 10-year span? Levon wasn't really making that much noise no. on the Richter no. scale before he became he, Levon. He was. I saw him like, at 2015 Worlds. And he looked like a monster then, but he was only, he looked like a 115 kilo monster. Oh, I was going to say, year. like a 250 pound monster that was still losing yeah. to Crosby and Sabin Badalescu. Yeah, yeah. But he did look, so, he did look, he did look big promising. Difference. <laughs> I mean, that's a very big difference in that time frame. Yeah. So, like, for, I remember, I, I want to, I want to add a few things about genetics here. I, I don't, I, I don't know accurately how long it took Devin to become, to go from, from, I guess, oh, Entry level pro to world elite, uh, whether that was ten years, fifteen years, whatever. You might be more aware of that, but I, I do remember asking John Brzezank the question: How long did it take him to go from brand new to world elite? And John's answer was a year and a half, which is that's that's an extreme outlier example of John that's being that he is. That's a lie. The guy broke well, his arm at thirteen years old. Arm no, it's, it's six. He broke it at sixteen. Sixteen. 13. 16. Well, Paul and John said 13. Okay. But the well, point is, is the guy grew up with an arm wrestling dad. His dad was like a national champion. And yeah. he grew right. up with an arm So he's been arm wrestling since he was a little kid. So to say, like, it took him a year and a half, what, a year and a half of competing as an adult? He probably competed as a kid and did all that stuff. And let's not be fooled and not fool ourselves. The arm wrestling training and approach to arm wrestling was a fucking mystery the arm wrestling yeah, level the yeah. number one guy in their weight class it's from different. 30 years ago isn't top 10 in anywhere in the states nowadays okay okay but the point i wanted to get to anyway the, the, there are it's outliers like john there are outliers like john who are going to have that genetic gift for the sport um well, do you agree with I what no i doubt. said or do you just yeah, not want yeah. to no, I I know he grew up he grew up in a in an arm wrestling uh, environment. But, the, but the, do you the, think that maybe then. the era was weaker? Yeah, look, I I, I don't want to say that, but I will, I will say that there if are it people wasn't taking. John, would you say it? If I said it's Mikey Scarra fucking phony who who <laughs> started blasting motherfuckers in the nineteen seventies. I just wanted to get back to the point about Auden. Before I'll, I'll come back to this one. We can yeah, we can yeah, we yeah. can pin this. Yeah, the, the Auden the Auden thing though for me like. Like someone in the comments, I missed it before. Someone said, "Haha, Ryan, you're just you're just saying that Auden can't do that because you couldn't do it." Laugh out loud. I've been pulling eleven years, and I've gone from a very weak start point to where I was I was no I was not even an, an amateur level place getter to where I'm at now. So I, I've seen what eleven years of consistent work does for someone like Auden. Let's give him an A plus of genetics because he's Devin's son. I still think that for Auden, it's going to take – in the current climate, and this is kind of the segue over where you're talking about, in the current climate, it's – I think it's 10 to 15 years minimum to actually become from yeah. 19 to the best in the world. Um, it, it's really hard to put a limiter on somebody because there are, like, weirdos 
Do I think that that Auden has that weirdo genetic? Um, no. I think that what what Auden has is uh, an incredible support unit, an incredible knowledge base behind him, and uh, he's got methodology driving him. But I don't know, honestly, if Devin's methodology, in my opinion, I think it might work for Devin, but I think it's going to be uh, a long road. I think fundamental arm wrestling is the way to fast track yourself. But then yeah. it just comes down to getting strong and whatnot. I think I think he's got a lot going for him as far as support unit and understanding the game and growing up in the game. I just don't think uh, – I think there will be people genetically that could walk in day one and still beat him. Um, and, and, again, I hate having these conversations, but where he is relevant, his YouTube's bigger than mine. I mean, it hurts my feelings. Mm. Um, <laughs> he's getting opportunities. I mean, listen, guys, I'm basically uh, a, a 16-year-old kid in a 43-year-old body. I'm still very fragile. But um, uh, he is a grown man. He's stepping into the grown man sport. So if we're going to break it down, I think uh, you can't put a timeline on, like, 15 years. I mean, it, I, I fast-track very, very, very fast. Um, but well, I, I think I'm like a good, I'm a good example. Easy for me. Uh, like, like I, I've people will categorize a lot of people, even yourself included. Once upon a time, Rob, I know said that I was genetically not gifted for the sport. And a lot of people will say that. And I look, I'm I'm happy for people to say that because when, when when you compare me to the monsters out there, I'm clearly not bringing the same sets of weapons. But but so but I'm an example of someone who over 11 years of genuinely loving the sport and genuinely never stopping training has has evolved to a, the level I'm at now which is up for debate but whether 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 you think I'm at a decent level or not I'm I'm a long way past where I began and so I think like if you use me as a baseline example of what can be done if you genuinely love the sport it it does take a while it it, it but there are going to be those dudes that just at 19 the the, that just rock up and already are in the in the conversation. Well, you're going to hear in the comment section that people talk about, like, the people from overseas, like a bacho, but they don't realize that that dude's probably already capped because he's been training That's what, so yes. hard, so much, so long, on so much gear, that the 19 him doesn't really have a 25, a 30, a 35. He's, mm -hmm. like, already here, and then we'll go like this. The 19 might be the absolute pinnacle of his career. Much like, where'd Arson go? Arson was gone in his 20s, and he'll never mm. go back to that. And so now, like, this, this, is, this is just fact as well. Like, when you look at European arm wrestling and, and American arm wrestling, in contrast, the longevity of American arm wrestling is far more significant. Uh, the, the, there have been many more flash in the pans out of Europe than out of the USA. I don't. I can't even really think of many flash in the pan no, guys out of USA. Not, not really. See, what's very dangerous about you, and, and there's been a few other guys, is, and I think is equally as much of a genetic um, attribute. It's it, it's that that grit, that determination, that that tenacity, that. Uh, failure to quit. If you ever watch Goodfellas, I'm a big movie buff, and they talk about Nicky, and Nicky was a little guy, but he was the enforcer, and Robert De Niro's kind of like, if you beat Nicky with fists, he comes back with a bat. You beat him with a bat, he comes back with a gun. And if you be, or, or he comes back with a knife or something. If you beat him with that, yep. you better yep. kill him, because he keeps coming and coming and coming. And there's something to be said about people. I've seen a lot of big, strong guys get emotionally broken and mentally broken and physically broken, and they're just like fucking done. Like, one or the other, any combination of them, they just fucking move on and they're done. But you, I mean, you've taken a lot of hate. You've taken a lot of heat. Some of it justifiable. Hey, bro, some of it justifiable, <laughs> but some of it not. But, like, anytime you're involved yeah. with hate, like, I've taken justifiable hate and I've taken non-justifiable hate. But anytime you're in the line of fire and you take losses and you got the people I told you so's and you're weak, imagine people, like, you do imagine you live it. People all day long telling you you're fucking weak in a sport where strength is... is is put on high on a pedestal. It's you gotta have a very strong <laughs> fortitude. I think you and Michael Todd are two. Of, I mean, maybe Michael Todd's got Rebecca there to really like help him. Maybe it's both. But hey, the guy puts his face on camera. When you can go and mm. be told all day long that you're suck, you should quit, you should kill yourself, you're weak, and you keep coming and you keep improving. And I'll tell people. I told Magda. Magda the other day wanted to set us up, and I says, "Man, dude's catching a lot of shade for losing a raw bath." Ron Bath beat Terrace Ivankin in his fucking prime. Like, when did Ron Bath become ashamed to lose to, to anybody on earth? If Ron Bath goes <laughs> to beat Dave Chafee, I'm not going to think less of Dave Chafee. 
I mean, it's yeah. crazy. So, well, like, uh, yeah, I, 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 I know. The yeah. real attribute is having that durability, like here, and to keep going. Yeah, yeah. I think no, I'm pretty all the time, bro. I, I, I actually, I, and that's the, uh, the, I guess the weird thing about me is I, I don't think about quitting. Um, I, the, the thing that excites me is where I'm at in five years. That's truly the thing that gets me going most is not where I'm at this month, next month, whatever. It's five years. But all of this to, to come around to talk about the European flash in the pans, <laughs> can 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 order and order do it, all this kind of stuff, I, and, and to ultimately come back to who's number one in 30 years, it's interesting, like you said, will we have a moment in the sport where someone, there's a death at the, at the table or something like that, and people say, okay, this is pushing things too far. Um, I, I don't know. Like, it, 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 the sport is at a place where the, the the biggest the biggest chemistry set does win. It is it is at that place. Yeah. In the All in the super heavies anyway. In the super heavies, for sure. One sponsor to shake it up. Who's number one, really? Because then it becomes down to who's got the most access to the, the the most technology even if i was pro gear let's just say let's go into an alternate reality ryan i'm pro gear now all of a sudden i think steroids are beautiful but what if where i am i'm limited to steroids that are like fucking old school shit and they got shit somewhere else where they're experimenting and they're playing with people's like legitimate like myostat and genetic code and they can make everybody grow over 400 pounds with even single digit body fats and, and, and they can do shit with, like, you know, now you can have elective surgeries. Like, for instance, you know, if people understood biomechanics and they could start moving your tendons to, to different heights to change leverages and stuff like mm. that. I mean, how far down the rabbit hole do we go where it's not you with your training and your performance that even if I was totally pro, now you're just limited to resources, it's not even about your survival ability. I can take the very best survivalist yeah, in the yeah. world, knows how to trap, hunt, get food, everything. If I put them in their bare bones in Antarctica, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to yeah. fucking die. Yeah. If I put them out there in the Amazon jungle with a fucking tarp and a, and, and, and a fire starter and a knife, oh, they might get some snake. They might stay out of the water. They might filter some shit. It's all about your resources. If you've got no resources, even if I'm pro gear, now it's just an arms race on who can get the most resources. So that's mm -hmm. why that shit doesn't hold water about being gear, you could do it or not, because some of these other countries are, are way advanced and have way more access to things. And, and, and that's what is running the arm wrestling world right now, except in my class, I'm gonna win it naturally. And the class above mine, sorry, Ryan, I'll probably do 95 and 105. But the rest of these fucking experiments realize that they either gotta play the game or be on the sidelines. Mm. It's and interesting, knows, man. Five uh, years? Motherfucker, so much could happen in five years. I'm wrestling academia. Put an interesting comment there. Um, isn't that just an extension of what genetics give one person over another, though? Uh, no, no. Stop using the fucking genetics like it's the same as gear. People want... This is why we all go equality... I want equality. Fucking equality doesn't exist, motherfucker. Because if equality existed, I want to be born at seven foot five so I can just be standing like this in front of a basketball hoop, making a hundred million dollars a year and not even worrying about arm wrestling. And then if somebody wants to arm wrestle me, I'll just grab them with my big oversized orangutan hand and fucking smash them for fun. While we're in my Bugatti, on my yacht, and all that shit because I just block <laughs> basketballs. So stop with the genetics. Usain Bolt, if he was a six foot tall sprinter, wouldn't be as fast as the fact that he's six foot fucking five. But that's what makes sports is people have genetic, like how does this guy line up against this guy? I'm sorry that your mom fucked your dad. I'm sorry, but that is your genetic makeup. Go back in time and get in Bill and Ted's fucking phone booth and slap your Grammy and tell her fuck another dude. I'm sorry, but some people have genetic makeups that are made for longer arms so they can jab at people. And while the guy with shorter arms think he's fighting, he goes, well, that's not fair. He should let me get a free shot in because his arms are longer than mine. And that's not fair. That volleyball player is six foot eight and I'm six foot two. That's not fair that he's spiking on my fucking face. <laughs> there it is. Sorry. Sorry. Some of these Korean motherfuckers with little skinny bones, they want so, to get into so like you... a strong man, but they don't have the build as some of these Icelandic motherfuckers. So, so resources. Fucking fault. 
So resources is not an extension of that being it's not it's not your fault not that you've got it. Resources is an external thing. How you know, I think that's what I think that's what he was getting at. I think that's what he was getting at. Saying that's oh, I thought he was saying like how God made you like genetics is like something that's like an advantage, like a given advantage or something. It is a given advantage. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't, I don't like anybody. What Why I don't do know, like Secretariat got millions of dollars <laughs> to start out other horses, and the horse who doesn't win a race gets put and made to glue. Horses that don't win races turn into Elmer's glue, bro, or go into McDonald's hamburgers, or shipped over to Ryan Bowen's country and called me. Some shit, <laughs> but they don't get studded out because they he's, want that. He's asked another team. question. He's asked another question, Rob. If a person had better genetics to drug response, uh, sorry, yeah, had better genetics oh. to drug response. What's the third ah, thing? That's not a genetic attribute. That's something that none of us should discover. It's not like if you're a regular guy. Let's say you're a regular fucking guy, and all of a sudden you take drugs and turn into the absolute incredible Hulk. And it's like, well, my genetic gift isn't being strong. It's not being durable. It's not being resilient. It's the fact that when I take drugs, I actually blow up like a fucking tick. You should never discover that, guys. Why do we know this? Oh, my God. That's like so... That's like saying, like, guys, you'd be surprised. Getting fucked in the butt isn't as bad as you think it is. <laughs> yes, it is. But why do you know that? You should never know this. What happened in your life that you figured this out? What happened in your life that you now know that that's not as bad as you think it is? G responsiveness to drugs is not a genetic attribute. It's more like durability that you don't fucking die. That you can take I will and kill other people. Rob, I've been, yeah, as we know, I've been open about the, the time period which I spent on 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 gear, and I've been told I was a terrible responder to it. Oh my God, bro! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, I'm, so it's I'm, not I'm, enough that you jump the fucking ship. It's now that like you jump the ship and you don't swim fast enough or some shit. Yeah. Like, come on, man! <laughs> what are we doing here? Are we arm wrestling? Are we trying to figure out who's stronger? Come on, guys. Like, let's get with the fucking program. You know what I think it is? You know what I think about the super heavyweight class? They're a bunch of fake-ass gangsters. You know what gangsters are? I come from an old-school blue-collar fucking group that they used to have problems. They go outside and fucking knuckle up. And the gangsters would joke about you can't do that anymore because if they didn't like what they saw, they go out and just get a gun and start shooting motherfuckers. The super heavyweight class just starts packing heat now. They're all packing heat because they don't want to knuckle up anymore. They don't want any of that man-on-man -man fucking drama. They want to fucking just shoot a motherfucker because it's so much easier. <laughs> Drop that, Mike. Thank you. The, the super hey. heavyweight class is all packing that heat. I'm over so, here throwing so, juice. Sir so Bagels, $5 super chat. Thank you, brother. He says, Rob, my dad is from Boston and grew up in Hill NH. What state's NH? New Hampshire. New Hampshire, New Hampshire. And Ryan, I'm two years into arm wrestling, starting very weak like you were. Thanks for inspiring. You're welcome, Sir Bagels. Thank you very much for the super Thank chat, man. Buddy. We appreciate it. We maybe appreciate it. Just so everyone knows. Maybe Sir just Bagels so, is the best in five years. Maybe. Just so everyone knows, Rob and I, we split these super chats 50-50. So it doesn't matter where you send them on my channel or his channel. It's all going to bounce out at the end of the month. So we're just. So, I just wanted to put that out there so it's not a war. Need that money, man. It's, I got five kids. <laughs> I don't come down here for my health. Are they? You got, are they all girls? All girls or? No, I got uh, two boys and three girls. Two my boys, girls three are girls. awesome. I just got an awesome picture teaching both my daughters of arm wrestling last night. We're looking a little deeper into it because I think that there's some opportunities might be coming soon. I'm okay. not, you know, maybe, maybe. Okay. Gabby's getting strong. She's going to the gym with me, so yeah, it's fun. Yeah, my my son's my son keeps hitting me up as to we go to the shop and he wants to buy something and I say, well, you you, you made any money lately? And he's like, no. How do you make money? And I'm like, dude, you I, I've told you a million times you can make money doing your arm wrestling thing. Like he he's he's got the advantage that Orton's got. He's already got a decent enough social media following that he can he's he's monetized for goodness sake. So it's like yeah, okay. I'm trying to push Gabby to do it more because I'm like, you're young, you're cute, you're, you're people like youth. And, and, and she's just kind of like, yeah, I'll put this out here and see how it stews. She's not really into it, which I'm kind of thankful for, but also kind of like there's an opportunity here where like you probably don't have to get a first job two years from now. You know what I mean? If yeah. you play it right and, and don't go into my pitfalls, like 100%. she's chilling and she plays sports. She's playing tennis now. You'd like that. She loves it. 
Hey, did you see, I, I, I just seen someone's comment here from Facebook. Paul has commented, it should either be legalised or banned. Make it down to pure strength and skill, equal playing field. Did you see that there is a enhanced games coming? It's like the Olympics equivalent, but some dude's got some dude sponsoring it and it's 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 pretty big and he's saying hey, all enhanced. Hey, you want to know secret? It's going to be the exact same fucking scores because they're all juiced anyways. <laughs> <laughs> <are> all <laughs> that would actually be really funny if if That's all the records stayed right. the exact and same. Now the curtains pull back and we go, blast as hard as you can and then nobody breaks a single world record. And the records How are all the same. <laughs> Oh, that is actually that. That well, man, that, be that's narrative, cool. though. We're either gonna realize that the the Olympics have been juiced the whole time, or we're gonna say, "See, steroids doesn't help that much at all." Come on, guys, come on. I watched Icarus <laughs> where they said they covered up like what, like one hundred or two hundred tests from Carl Lewis, and I was a big Carl Lewis fan as a kid. I'm a kid of the '80s, man. When Carl Lewis done broke that record in 1986, I was sitting there with my Wheaties box. I was like, "Let's go." But, uh, man, your boy was a little bit saucy. <laughs> hey, um, Chance Shaw wants to know, are you ready for Jerome? I know you've you mentioned him a few times tonight, but how are you feeling? Man, are, let you, me tell are, you, you are you in shape? I'm emotionally ready. I feel like I'm physically ready. And uh, I got a few areas I want to tighten up on because I had some pains, and you know, back here. But I anticipate yep. in two months I'm going to be a bad dude. I'm telling you, man. I just, my body responds really well to training and I push it really hard. And I think that, uh, you know, I'm walking that line of like, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So I'm walking right on that line of like almost killing my shit. And yes, you know, and I feel like I'll rebound good. But yeah, I think, I think you guys are going to be surprised. I really it, 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 how are you? I, I, I've had some really interesting data, better, better data, more comprehensive data than I've ever had on myself. Uh, when it comes to peaking for events, I peaked for Ron, like in respect to this, this single lift that I'm doing daily, I peaked with a 55 kilo lift six days before the Ron Bath match. I, I, I got back from Ireland. I, I got straight back on the, on the horse of trying to, to get ready for this tournament that's next weekend. So I have three, I had three weeks between Ron Bath and this match. I was worried that wasn't going to be enough time to get ready. But I'll tell you, and you saw it early on, Rob, when I started picking up the weights at first, I was like, I was, I was way down in strength, way down in strength. But the soreness gradually, gradually disappeared. Today, I lifted 53.5, which is one increment off my PR. And I think tomorrow I can hit my PR again. So it's been three, it's been two weeks since I pulled Ron, and I've been desperately trying to rehab and get back onto a cycle up in terms of where my strength's at, I think it's just going to come in time. But it's it, it's super interesting data because I've been doing the lift daily, so I actually can see it and feel it. Right. So w were you asking me a question, how I peak? I don't, no, no, I was just saying it's really interesting data. I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever noticed how well uh -oh. you recover from soreness to peak again, how, how quick you can turn around. But I, I, I thought yeah, like... Yeah. It, I, I think for me, uh, a part of it is probably active recovery. I think when I sit around, I get my own thoughts. So I think uh, I just gotta like be active. I gotta. Be so are you are you, are you physic are you physically back ready for anything right now? Like since pulling James? What do you mean ready? Like to pull somebody tomorrow? Like could you pull next week and be as as good as you, you can? I'll be? tell you right now, the whole fucking comment section of trolls, I can fuck up right now. <laughs> but to take a high level match like Jerome or somebody, I would I would want a little bit of time. I would want um, to do my proper rest. Uh, I feel like I'm in a good place where I have an idea of what's starting to work for me. And the difference mm. is is what I like, and it's not just me, it's anyone who can evolve in the sport. But a lot of people don't evolve. They usually do the same thing and, and they either get stronger in that or weaker in that and they go through ebbs and flows. I really feel like there's a reinvention process because I did so long of being afraid of lanes and protecting lanes and uh, cutting myself short, that as I start to implement it more, it's almost like a, a new version of myself. So people will kind of gauge me like, here's where he was when he was good. But I really think I can blow past that. I really think I can get, get way past it. And, and I, I really think I can get in the way upper echelons really fast and really soon. And, um, what's your what's your I, age? You're 42, 43? 43. I'll be 44 this summer. 
Okay. Okay. But I feel well, great. Like my, I don't. I don't disagree that this. I don't disagree. The sport can have a peak in that in that that age group from forty five oh, through to fifty. I think I can run hot. Like if you look at a guy like Norm Devio, he was winning mm-hmm. nationals and and beating super certified studs, in 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 not a not a cheeky way like Ron uh, like like King, fucking crazy George. Crazy George. He was yeah. actually like muscularly like wristing and hand like people that were studs really really yeah. good pullers guys trained like Corey ruiz by by ron bath that were national champion studs when national champion meant something and norm devio was like snatching them up and this guy was in his mid-60s and my dad was very similar to norm devio except the fact he was an alcoholic and didn't train he just had great genetic strength and physical attributes but he aged so gracefully like when i, I used to see my dad out at the club, the club, the bar, at like mm. in his sixties, hustling girls that were like twenty years old, because he was like he looked like he was in his thirties. You know what I mean? He had good aging, he had good physicality, and I, I have hope that I could carry that for like another 10, 15 years and and be at a peak form. And I think that I've found new training principles that mm. um, are unique and kind of fill the voids of where I'm lacking or felt like would bridge me from like creeping on elite to dominating the elite, you know, like that bridge, like I, with my hand dominance and my wrist dominance, if I hit somebody like Sasha sideways outside his shoulder, then I can manipulate him in up over. I'm going to fucking kill that guy. Oh my God. Don't even fuck. With me, I, do, I do. Don't I do. I do see it. I do see it. Just, let's talk about the match for the next five years. You don't want to <laughs> feel it, dude. No, 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 no. I, I, I know I want to. I, I definitely do. I definitely do. I you're gonna lose look, sleep over it. Dude, we, we, we are not only gonna throw down, but we're gonna throw down in the most glorious way. I, I, I there's even a big temptation. I think we should talk about it. That I should just turn Hell, up yeah, in your back. Talk about it. I should just turn up in your backyard, and uh, and literally we go live on my YouTube channel or live on both of our YouTube channels like we are right now, and we just throw down, and put money on the table, and make it happen. We, is that oh, is that yeah. something Why don't we talk or what? About what we've thought about talking about? And by the way, before we do, we do thank you. Ten US is. dollars, ten US dollars to Ben CM Pauly, Granite Arms. Thank you, man. He says it's called a, it's called World's Strongest Man. I think that was relevant to the conversation we're having about five minutes ago. I apologize for yeah, not seeing yeah, that. Yeah, about the, uh, the straight up blasted games. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank That's you, it. Ben. See your ass. You're the practice. man, Ben. <laughs> He's one of your boys, is he? Good yeah, stuff. He so actually, he lives at my camp where I want to have our event, and he'd be one of the undercard guys. So listen, okay. guys, here's a concept I have. And for all you promoters out there, feel free to ju- steer me off the cliff, okay? Pay no attention to the headset, all right? <laughs> steer clear. Uh, 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 I want the promoters to know that we have other options because, honestly, like, we're just trying to work time frames and what's going to be the best promotion of self. We're all in business here, so... Please, anybody who wants to get upset and pissed off and whatever, nothing personal. We're just trying to put something together that's the best representation of self and having a good time and as well as trying something different. So I got a gorgeous camp up there. It's part of a resort. They have bands. They have games. They have contests. They have fucking happy hours, golf carts. It's not. It's a resort. I want to bring Ryan Bowen there, and we're going to do a prelude week of him and I, all his bullshit about being a tennis champ and a specimen and <laughs> athlete, we're going to we'll compete find out. a week's worth of camp games. It's, I'm going to even play his ass in tennis. I heard he was good at tennis, but I've been getting my tennis game up. Then we might dial down a pickleball, though, because we're going to even the field. <laughs> we might do a foot race. We might do a canoe race. We might do beer pong, happy hour contest. We might have a cook-off. And then at the end of the week of us competing and living, and instead of having a press conference, it's all like, you know, fluffy, fluffy, fucking fakey, fakey, have some beers, throw on the fire, and we can tell each other the thoughts. Then we're going to have like a little bit of a, a cheap, very affordable pay-per-view with some great matches locally. We might even have a VIP people fly in because I'm going to get a fucking DJ. <laughs> I'm going to get a smoker. We're going to fucking throw a pig roast on there. We're going to have games. I'm going to get a dunk tank. Ryan Bowen's going in the dunk tank. We're going to do all that <laughs> shit. And then somewhere in there, me and Ryan are going to arm wrestle after about four other matches. But good guys, local guys. And if somebody wants to fly in like a rich motherfucker like Dallas Langston wants to come in and arm wrestle somebody, I got a guy for you. 
Somebody wants to come in and arm wrestle pay. I got a guy for that. So it's like we got a handful of matches and me and Ryan Bolt, but it's going to be so casual. And we could throw some smoke and some fire and some fucking. Maybe we'll put some nails in the thumb, the, the, the pin pad. That would be original. But I'm just saying there's options where we can make this very organic, very fun, mm. a lot of uh, interesting now, dialectic competition. And I'll talk about it from from the from the side of the just look at the, the promoters, the business side of things, the YouTube angle. I, I think the sport has been it, it, like, from the consumer side of things, it's it's kind of oversaturated when it comes to pay per views at the moment. They're 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 everywhere, and they're not they're getting more expensive. Um, there are some great promotions out there. I've had the privilege of getting to pull with every single promotion that there's been since I've been active in the sport. Every single major promotion I've I've pulled with, and and I've. I've had a great time and I love all of them. But one of the most enjoyable things that I've done is when I pulled Chance Shaw in Craig Soublier's garage and there was 200 Floridians there surrounding it. The atmosphere was hectic and he came in strutting his stuff and I went behind enemy lines and beat the dude. That was so much fun. That and let me I tell think- you something. People know what I do up at camp. It's going to be a hot environment, man. And I'm going to advertise you. You're going to get a jumpsuit on that's going to have the Australian fucking flag on it. <laughs> I already got one that's like the Apollo Creed from Rocky. The whole get up with the Uncle Sam. And I'm going to play Living in America. Dude, we're going to kill it. <laughs> and if we have like a $2 pay-per-view, we don't need to be 5 t- 10 20 I'm sure we can get enough there to cover your flights and make a good run at it. And we set a concept. And we get off of the thumb. Like, I love me some promoters. What you guys are doing is amazing. But right now, if schedules don't work and everything, just know that I'm an arm wrestler and I can arm wrestle anytime and anywhere I want. Nobody owns me. That's it. And I'm going to tell you right now, not only would it be fun for everyone to watch, it's going to be organic, like real fun. We're not going to have to pretend. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I honestly, th- I honestly, th- I honestly think there's no better fucking game we play. There's no better way. There's no world. better way to 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 utterly crush your soul than to beat you in your own backyard. Dude, I'm gonna bring you to the arcade. We're gonna play Galaga. We're gonna play Big <laughs> Buck Hunter. We're gonna foot race. We're gonna play cornhole. We're gonna play fucking pool. We're gonna do all of it. We're gonna have a big series, and we're gonna tally it all up. And actually, the person with the winning score at the end of the week. Get the ch- pick their rules depending on how much okay. you win by a margin. Okay, I like, like I like that? that. You can be like, I if like you win that. by a six to four margin, you get two requests. <laughs> so you can start in the straps and start on the good strap side. Oh my Whoa, goodness, I don't need, I don't need, twister. I don't need to start in the straps anyway. It's all good. Hey, oh, uh, you want to start in the strap? <laughs> trust me. Trust I just me. need to settle this one because this is one of the pet peeves I have when people say that I'm not beating Chance now. Though, look, I beat Chance when the strength ratio was exactly the same. People who say that Chance was nobody when I beat him, Chance has already beaten Nick Zinner at that point about three months earlier. He'd already beaten uh, Rackers as well, the same tournament. He was already smoking people. So and when people people tell me Chance I, was I'll nobody when I pulled him, I'll say this. And, and listen, if anybody watches this thinks I'm a fucking sellout, you guys know I'll say it like it is. And this isn't because I'm on a podcast, Scott, because I'll tell them exactly what I think. But after seeing Chance pull David our bully, I think he would have a problem if Ryan kind of kings moved a little bit. And then once the wrist was cracked, it would stay cracked. Because even though Chance and, and, and Ron have their little altercations, Chance does not have that shoulder committed, six foot four, tall, pressing, relentless, ridiculous shoulder pressure that Ron has. And it took 100%. all of it to beat Ryan. And I think that Ryan would, it's crazy. Look, right? look, all, 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 all I can, is. but I actually believe that Ryan would crack Champ Shaw's wrist. And in the best of yep. five, Ryan would win. And that's not because he's on the camera. Because, guys, listen, I've had other podcasts before. I'll fuck it right up. I don't care. I'm a self-destructive individual. <laughs> Look at my life. I'm a self-destructive person. But I do believe that Ryan would be Chance in a best of five. Maybe not one, but in a best of five, yes. And, and you, you, you're spot on. What I remember, and I, I genuinely believe that Chance and I, the feeling of Chance and I gripped up has not would not have changed. It would feel very similar well, to what you're it did. you're bigger, too, He's, now. He, his arm, he's. I'm giving him credit to say he's bigger and stronger too, as well. But his arm right. was, his arm was stronger than mine. But his wrist, f- 
failed and, over time. It got every round. It got worse and worse and worse. He yeah. uses the strap to secure it. And if someone's as good in the strap, they can negate that. And I believe that you have a strong strap game, which yeah. is why so, yeah, anyway. I put that video up. Everyone thought I was doing pronation curls on that stupid fucking <laughs> thing on Instagram. No. I tied it in a way that emulated what I feel on the straps, you stupid fucking assholes. I was actually like <laughs> like getting used to the different like low, high, but everyone thought I was doing pronation. God damn it. What a fucking that, that, swing and a miss. It, it looks like you've got your head in it. When you have the when you have it twisted sideways like that, it looks kinda like a, a, a toilet a crown. seat. I was gonna say okay. a toilet seat, but all hell. <laughs> No, man. Hey, hey guys, what's your we fucking have name? Nine Cannon nine Maximo. I am not a sellout. I am a true speaker. And it, put it this way, if I had money to bet and someone's like, yeah, pick between Chance and Ryan right now, no bullshit. And it's not a knock on Chance at all. I do believe that what I saw with Braun, I have a high level of respect for. And I do believe that you can absolutely fall into the quicksand if you're not smart. And I think that I, I, I do believe that. Now, if Chance beat Ryan, I wouldn't be like crazy shocked. But I'm telling you right now, it's not what you guys think it is. I, that's just my assessment. Who the fuck am I? I'm just a little American hiding over here and pulling nobodies. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, we have minutes. we have eight minutes left. We, we don't have eight minutes mark. left. You took 20 minutes getting ready with the Echo. <laughs> Let's go. If you have if you have, Tell these people hot to get behind the Sebago get in. championships. We're going to have a decathlon. And the winner of the decathlon gets to use the advantage and pick their rules in the match. And we're going to have to talk you about starting a hook. If you want to start with your shoulder committed, what would you ask pads? for? What, uh, what would you ask shit? for? If, if, you, if you got the advantage, if you could pick something, what are you asking for? Wow. That's interesting. I have to think about it. Right. I don't know. Cause I'm actually a pretty fair arm wrestler. I got to start learning how to cheat a little bit better. <laughs> How's this? I would ask you not to be a fucking cheating fuck. Like you are. I, w I would I would say I get to apply the strap instead of the referee. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. That's next, that's next level, man. I, you, if I, I have applied the, the strap, strap, you're in trouble. <laughs> I would ask for the strap, but I want it to be up here on this joint. Oh, above the wrist? Oh, that's above horrible. Above the wrist bone. Oh, oh that's, this would yeah, get that... spicy. So you better get your running shoes on, motherfucker. And I got to tell you what, you better get your pink punk pad on. Because I'm going to pick the well, I think, We're going to put together I think a half one. We're gonna, we have to each pick an even amount of games. We hey, can't be. guess what? You could make a whole video out of each competition. Because then we can oh, tally 100%. up what our score is leading up to it. So when, when, I, wipe, when I wipe uh, you. Why, can you cook? I can cook like a motherfucker, dude. <laughs> no, I can't cook. I, I'd be, oh, I'd be lying. I'll just make food and we'll cook. We'll have a pants off, dance off then instead. Okay. And we all saw me at Arm God, bro. Pants off, dance off <laughs> champion. Uh, look at look at these people coming in. The, the, we we call for questions and someone says, "Does Devin beat Levine?" Guys, we told you we're not talking about that subject tonight. Um, yeah, like I don't know if you guys get on the internet, but there's at least let me give it a <laughs> low low ball here. At least one thousand videos right now that will break that all down. And I think we did last week. We did, we did, we gave it. We gave it its full session. What I don't like to do is repeat myself. I tell my kids. I don't like repeating myself because you know what happens? I tell them if I have to say it again, you're getting a spanking. And I don't want to spank <laughs> nobody on this channel. Like, so let's cut it. Let's cut the bullshit. Hey, we, got a, we got a super chat come in. Daniel499 says, this duo is working well rooting for RVJ in his next match. Yeah, and, and that uh, guy's super bad. Throw a guy a prayer. Like, he might kill me. Everyone thinks he's going to kill Not everyone, but people down there think he's going to kill me. But I think if I show up in shape, I'm gonna I'm gonna show up in good form and do a good representation of myself. But thank you, Daniel. Okay, we got a question from M Matthew Carrier. He says, "Who's someone you're looking forward to having a match with from Europe?" And this is the both of us. If you could pull someone from Europe, your choice. Who is it, Rob? Well, of course. I mean, uh, Zorab uh, retired. Interestingly enough. But, I mean, do I want to do the slowest set and have a bunch of matches like John where I can have, like, 10 matches a year? Or do I want to go right for number one? Because of the ghost, because I would like to shove that proverbial dick in a lot of the haters' mouths, I want to smash Sasha. I want to fucking yeah, smash him. I knew you were going to say Sasha. I want to smash him. But I could have a slow climb and beat all the guys under him and keep getting free trips and matches and let a lot of speculation happen. But it's going to happen. 
Maybe he's my, my my answer. Um, and Coach Ray. my good. <laughs> no, I don't want to pull Coach. I'll, I, I promise <laughs> the world I will pull Coach Ray on a side table at some point. But I, I I'm not seeking a super match with Coach Ray at, at with our weight differences. Um, but no, my goal is to become top 10 105 right i also have a goal of becoming number one in australia whilst never having a super match with lachlan are there uh, because we work better together when we yeah, are supporting each other so yeah. in order to do that and this is this is at, with complete love for lachlan are there i'd like to beat someone that he hasn't beaten that he lost to so if like i could krasimir. pull any krasimir is on the list of like like for me it's in the if i get a run going I would like to to eventually say Krasimir. Uh, that was one just of the guys like, that that was one of the Europeans that I had uh, eyeballs on too. Yeah. I have big respect for his career, and I think he's actually coming to. He had maybe a little ebb and flow, but Krasimir's ebb and flow. People hated on him, but he's still elite, bro. Like he's yeah. still always been elite. He lost to Dave Chafee and Marcio and Matt Mask. Those are guys that go on the all-time great list, really. So, like, but he's coming back and. I think he won the Zlotti overall. Did he win the whole Zlotti Cup one year? On left, on left, 2019, he won But even still, his right, I think he took second behind, what, Siliev? Am I right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, super bad dude. But, um, yeah, that's a guy that I was looking at pulling before. um, I think that was going to be in, was it East versus West? And, And, of course, things got changed and, you know, whatever. But. Sure. Yeah, that's a good hey, one. I want to. I just want to address a couple of stay co stay gold pony boy says crazy LMFAO stay gold pony. I am sure you are a pathetic, weak little arm wrestler. I could snap your arm in half. That will what's just crazy saying, LMFAO mean? Oh, he's just saying, look, there's Ryan being delusional again, saying he wants to pull someone out of his league. Uh, you know what, though? <laughs> this is what I, I I'm, happy to, to I'm happy to I'm happy to acknowledge, like, nobody. I'm. I'm not scheduling a match with Krazy now. This is this is when people ask me what's my goal, what's my dream, who would I pull from Europe? Let it be known, and it should be pretty damn clear by now that I will always pull up. I you will never see me hunt an easy win. I will do the exact opposite. I'm like, give me the match that will drag me the furthest up. I am totally cool with getting an L if the it's going to drag is, me you know up. Where you are. If you exactly. Don't test yourself. Because you want to be reality, a loose pull elite. <laughs> I say, I simple. say all the time about these guys. I say, you know, when they say you're pulling a nobody, I was like, everybody was a nobody until there was somebody. You know, when I went to my first event, they couldn't even pronounce my fucking name right. They did no, nothing. But then all of a sudden, you start winning. Then people take note, and then they want to know who you are, and then they're, also, they're pronouncing your name right, and so on and so forth. But everyone's a nobody until they get, like, a notable win. You know, yeah. like I say, I love the example of Justin Bishop. Justin Bishop was just an Alabama boy who was a strong Alabama kid who really nobody in the world gave a fuck about, to be honest. And then he showed up at UAL, and there was three WAF level guys there. Three. And one of them was Alexander Kovalchuk, who I think might have won the WAF, but he was definitely a medalist. Eduardo mm-hmm. Tiete was definitely a medalist in, in high up in that weight class. And Giannis, who I believe won gold at maybe around that time. And he beat all three of them. I don't think he pulled Kovalchuk. I think Tiete pulled Kovalchuk. But he beat Tiete and Giannis. And he went from being a fucking nobody to a humongous somebody on the world stage in one second. Like literally one yeah. second. Yeah. But if you beat that guy the day before that event, it'd be like big deal. You beat some hick from Alabama. Without knowing that that guy is world fucking level. You yes. guys are so caught up in, I don't see their social media. What's their resume? Motherfucker, there's some really bad dudes out there that are super elite that might not fit your itinerary in timeline and just can't go to all around the world. But there could be some bad dudes out there and you don't want to give them credit because they haven't gone on your pay-per-view yet. Fuck you guys. I said, hey, yeah, Connolly. Yeah, Connolly family. Man. Thank you very much for the super chat four ninety nine. He says you guys have your differences, but you're both great fathers. I hope you keep this podcasting going. Will you both be in Orlando? Hey, Connolly family, Hell I appreciate yeah, that. It, Look at us. You, We're running this thing now without a fucking hiccup. 
Do you see how seamless this is? Perfect. Perfect sound, everything. It only took a, an hour to get took there about again. A but... hour the first half. But you know, you know I, I hope I actually I actually hope that Rob and I through this podcast can show people that the internet is a space that does not truly reflect the character of a man. Uh, because when we finally got to hang out, as you can see, it's resulted in this. And there was no blow up. There was no there was no punch on. It was it was pretty easy to to actually have respect for each other off the bat. Yeah, so. I mean, listen. Yeah. The dude just tried to discredit my career a little bit and tried to get himself. <laughs> he tried to fast track himself into an arm wrestling match. And of course it offended me. And of course I was genuinely annoyed. And at times, like I said, like, don't be a mosquito and all that shit. I, I, I will be, you know, Hey, you know, a little, little annoyed, but there was no blood feud. He didn't like hurt my family. He didn't, you know, it's arm wrestling drama. You know, some of the trolls out there, I think a slap more than I ever wanted to slap Ryan Bowen. Oh, Heather wanted me to remind you that I'm going to be in the air this time next week because I'm going on a cruise, guys. So we can either do a later or put it on hold for the next week or whatever. But I'm going on a okay. cruise, first time in my life. Pray for me, guys, that I don't hit any big tsunamis <laughs> or any shit like that. Because you'll you'll come back. I just, well. You'll come back 15 pounds heavier. That's what I'm saying. Right, off. right. I'm going to be in the, the, the 150 pound, the 150 kg. But I don't swim well. But I have a theory. If a ship goes down, I am the lone survivor. Because I can latch on to dudes and just drown them. <laughs> they say nothing scarier in a, in, a, in a drowning situation than a person who can't swim because they'll drown everyone else around them and when they panic. So let's just hope the boat stays afloat and Roth eats a lot of food and has a lot of fun. And then I come back and I got about seven weeks to train for Jerome. But I'm going to use all that dirty bulk to get strong. It sounds have a nice gym in the chip, though. Yeah, we'll, 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 let's confirm, let's confirm throughout the week. Let's confirm throughout the week when we're going to do it again because we definitely need to do it again. Next weekend for me, I am pulling the eight-man AWE tournament. Uh, it's it's a I, I, Seven out of the eight guys in the tournament have been national champions, and the eighth guy is Rickard Bournemouth, the, the South African stud. Um, yeah, so it, I, it, saw, it, I saw videos of him. That's gonna be it's a tournament that's you really legit. Win, bro. That's a big statement if you can win that. Yeah, I, I, I really plan to. I think I have the game to beat Matt Dayer. Listen, this I really want to keep that fucking uh, YouTube shit going about I'm doing this lift every day until I reach top 10 in the world. But that's mm. not going to benefit you coming into a big tournament. You got to maybe say I'm going to do well, this every day. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'm, tomorrow is my last lift before the tournament tomorrow. So I'll have six days rest at the end of yeah, it. But I, I should, I'm going to hit a PR Max tomorrow. Lifts like that will tear your ass up. Yeah. I'll get back yeah. to it. We can talk about that in depth later, but I, I'm, I'm super curious actually as to see whether this Bulgarian method, because I've had no shortage of people saying that this method is ridiculous, but I think that they're watching a couple, they, they're thinking that I'm doing a max lift every day. I'm not doing a max lift every day. In a nutshell, it's basically as soon as I fail, I drop at 10 kilos and climb back up with increments and then go again. It's just that I'm doing a lift of that nature every day. So it's kind of like the Bulgarian method, a bastardized version of it. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah, man, power on. I win that shit. That way there you can get your stocks up. So when you come to camp, it's like instead of having 100 pay-per-views, maybe we can get like 5,000. Yeah, sounds good. Because it's going to be funny as shit watching me beat you in like tennis. Ah, so Connolly fan, we, we forgot to answer his Super Chat question. Will both of us be in Orlando? I won't be in Orlando. No. Is that for I'll, What's in I'll Orlando? I'll be in Orlando. What's for in Orlando? Sure. Hostile territory. I could use another Boston guy down there. Apparently, everybody, What's going on everybody in Orlando? is rooting against me down there. What's going on there, Rob? That's where um, I'm pulling Jerome. That's okay. the first okay. West qualifier. Actually, I think Auden has a match down there, and Devin's going to be there. Okay. okay. So, interesting. Um, hell yeah, man. I've been trying to get a match with Gabby and Avery, um, but, you know, it's hard to get Gabby a match. Because she's either, like, got to go against, like, the super, like, like really, really, really experienced girls or, like, other teens. And there's not really much for her. She's in a, she's in a weird space. But, you know, she's getting really interested in training. She's strong as fuck, though. She really is. That's, she pulled me yesterday, yeah. and I, I was like, I hope to God I'm broken down. Because I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> I, I didn't think I could bring her back. I was, get, I was, I was a little go. stressed out. I was talking shit to Jerome. And I couldn't even beat my daughter. I'm like, uh, chance. Uh, I, 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 something <laughs> came up. <laughs> Some shit came up. 
Hey guys, oh, you've you hear that the music is on? That means that we're done. Oh yeah, that pod yeah. music. I like this. This is the yeah. elevator. It's how we sign phone. off. It's how we sign off with the with the music. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I do apologize for the the messy audio at the beginning. Please be patient with us. We yeah, will the problem is, is we it'll don't be slick. Fixed it, dude. Oh, I it know. It's like an accidental that... fix. Yeah, I know. That doesn't help. It doesn't help. Hey, but maybe anyway. we can reschedule this for like Friday or Sunday or some bullshit. Maybe yep. Friday. Friday night sounds good to me. I can work or, or with Friday. Friday morning, like the same time Friday. Yeah. Sounds I'm good. I'm going away Friday afternoon. Your boy's going to be on a cruise with the drink package doing what I do. <laughs> All righty, guys. We're out of here. Thank you very much. Take it easy, You're everybody. listening to Over.